Okay, guys, we are live. We're going to go ahead and get started. Let's give a, a moment for things to synchronize over on YouTube and also on gunchannels.com. Um, I'm pretty excited for today's episode of Caliber Corner, episode number 20, um, holiday and gift ideas for firearms enthusiasts, for friends, for significant others, uh, a little bit of everything going on today. So, um, ooh, it looks like they're playing an ad on the YouTube side. This is interesting. Uh, you guys might be catching this uh, with just a little bit of a delay. So, uh, first thing I need to do before we before we take a, an attendance to see who's over on the chats, before we let the panel introduce themselves, Midnight Range TM, also known as the other Travis, or I just simply call him Travis, um, he's going to be hosting a very special episode of The Closer uh, this Sunday night. Um, I do not remember the time. I believe it was... 10 o'clock East Coast time, 9 o'clock Central, or maybe it's 10 o'clock Central, 11 o'clock East Coast, but check out his channel on YouTube, okay? And then also check him out over on gunchannels.com. It's Midnight Range TM. And he's going to be doing a uh, emergency Thanksgiving hotline where you have an opportunity to ask him as many questions as you want about your, your, your turkey day emergencies, or if you don't know how to make something, or if you want tips or advice, he's encouraging you to get your families on to, to join in the chat and ask questions if you've got... Uh, a spouse or you've got a family member that that wants to make something and they don't know how to do it have them put the question in there and he will steer them in the right direction so i wanted to get that out because we're going into the week before uh, thanksgiving when everybody has a hectic schedule and everything just goes loco so um i want to get that out right now so uh but before we do anything else let's go ahead and check out and see who's joining us this morning uh over on the gun channel side we've got yesterday's pomade with us we've got tony there tony's here uh we got patrick joining us on the gun channel side so those guys are over there watching us. Thanks for joining in, guys. Um, over on the YouTube side, we got a lot of people coming in here. We had Grim90 was the first guy to show up as usual. Uh, then we got a little Midnight Range TM with us. He'll be jumping in and jumping out. Uh, Doug Wayne is with us. Doug Wayne said he's going to be sharing this uh, chat with his family, which is very cool. Uh, Victor Cordova is with us today. Good morning, Victor. Gerald Weldon is with us, too. Hey, we're doing great, man. Um, anything good gun related is a good gift for me. There you go. That makes it easy. Okay, we're done with the episode. Just buy whatever you want. Uh, Jim is there and Jim is here. Jim Burgess is joining us. So good morning, Jim. Thanks for coming in and, and joining us here. So uh, we're just going to we're gonna go and let the panel introduce themselves and we'll get right to it. I apologize. I'm trying to jump over anything. So let me go and start off on my right. Uh, Triple D, what is going on? What are you doing, man? I'm just sitting out here waiting for a deer. What I should have been doing last week when we talked. That's all right, man. That's all right. Uh, so, so I am. I've already got one, one tag filled. I've I had a tag for one buck this year, and I, I got a decent one of those last uh, last weekend or on Monday morning, I guess it was. Yeah, I saw so, the photos. Uh, that was awesome, man. That was very cool. Yeah, man. And yeah. He's gonna. He, he's he's mature, but he's not super old. Should be some really good meat on there. Oh, definitely. And, uh, yeah, and I'm just trying to fill my bonus tag. I've got uh, a tag for a uh, a white uh, white tail antlerless only. That's to go here. So I'm trying to add a little more uh, meat in the freezer. Isn't it? Isn't it nice living in a state where you get buy one get one free on your deer tags? <laughs> I know. And, and what's funny is where where I am right now on the uh, the Anderson Ranch, uh, my home place here. Um, I'm about two and a half hours away from where I currently live, and everybody that I talk to down there just kind of looks at me like, like I'm nuts when I say, you know, I've got a bonus tag. The, a lot of the units across the state don't have enough deer. Uh, they've got a lot more hunting pressure, and uh, they don't have bonus tags on their permits like we do over here. So I, uh, I'm doubly blessed here. You know, we have had uh, many out in the, where I'm at in the central area of the state, except we've had some chronic wasting happen the last couple of years, and so the numbers have been down. Now, I'm not seeing any lack of deer south of town. I'm not seeing any lack of deer along the interstate, but when you really get out into some of those more isolated areas where you're used to seeing the herds, you don't necessarily see them. So, yeah, they're, the game and parks may be, uh, may be tightening up the, uh, the number of permits that they issue, the number of tags that they issue in the future. So, But anyway, man, thanks for joining us today. I do appreciate it. Um, Tony, what? Tony, what is going on this morning? Tony, how you doing, bud? Um, wet. Um, I was out, but it's oh, freaking okay. storming here. Mm, mm -hmm. That's what Squib was saying, too. He's dealing with a little, some rain, some, some muck kind of coming down this morning. Uh, were you going to go out and get your get your hunt on today at all or not? Going to get your deer hunt I've on? I've already been out and got wet. Come back. <laughs> That's enough for you. <laughs> I mean, it, it's actually yeah. thunderstorming here. Yeah, you know what? That you got, I think you guys got what we had last night. I'm, I'm not kidding. We had thunderstorms coming in. It's like, isn't it winter? You know, and you see lightning and thunder, and I'm like, what is this, July? I mean, this is insane. So, lightning, yeah, not thunder, some minor flash flooding. It's crazy, Doesn't man. This is not, not typical for fall. 
No, no, it does not. not nor is it safe either. So it's good to good to have you with us here, and hopefully you're you're warming up, you're drying up, and you got your coffee. Oh, you betcha. All right, man. Cool, cool. Squibby, what is going on, Squib? How you doing, man? That's a beautiful scene you got in the background there. Where are we at? Give me an o'clock position. One o'clock, two o'clock, eleven o'clock. Straight ahead. You see it? It's it's a deer. Is he right there in back of the bulldozer? We're gonna get a deer pop. It's a John Deer. <laughs> it's a John Deer. deer. It's oh. the John Deer Dude. Dude. <laughs> oh my god. It's a cat. I see a caterpillar. I see a caterpillar, right? <laughs> That's a John Deer. Everybody knows that John Deer ripped off caterpillar comments. I was so pumped up, I'm like Where's it at? I thought we were going to get a deer pup. <laughs> I know. I was so excited. I was like, Ooh. I'll tell you what, I may, I may be hunting with a Triple D in January. If I do, we may have to get that sucker. We might have to get some some hunting footage and get that going. That might be a lot of fun. So uh, that'd be awesome. So yes, I yes. found out that there's a uh, there's a January muzzle loading season in Michigan. Oh. So uh, it's kind of like, ooh. But uh, yeah, my uh, my deer hunting dreams this year are destroyed. Uh, that aside, though, Christmas is coming, and uh, I've got uh, the Christmas gifts pretty much covered this year. And it is yeah. it, it's all fire it's all firearms related. Um, what happened was uh, last year before the election, buying uh, I bought uh, AR lowers, and then later I started buying uppers and components, and I thought. Well, maybe this year for Christmas, I'll give everybody AR-15s because Hillary's going to win. Well, Hillary didn't win. Yeah. So I just left everything in the boxes, put the lowers in the safe, and uh, just held on to them. And we had a, had a more regular Christmas in the Squib household. There you go. And uh, not to say that there weren't there were some firearms-related things in the stockings. But uh, this year, we kind of got some financial issues, and I went to the wife, and I said, why don't I just build up those AR-15s under the tree, one for everybody, and then there's, there's our Christmas. And she said, that's a great idea. Thanks, so I said, well, I've got to. <laughs> so I started shopping around Bass Pro Shop, uh, and uh, when they had gun cases on sale, I got uh, four matching gun cases, and I placed some orders with some suppliers, and uh, I've been getting in parts since. And at some point, I will have uh, everything I need, and I'll build up those ARs. They'll be in cases. They'll have flag safeties, cable locks, uh, side adjustment tools, uh, two spare magazines each, and uh, be all wrapped up. And the thing I was thinking, though, it's too bad Magpul doesn't make wrapping paper. <laughs> That would be sweet. Magpul printed wrapping paper. You know, if you emailed them, they might do like a holiday run of it because they do a calendar, I know. And maybe they could have somebody just print up. A, they'll do like a limited release uh, with just their logo on it, you know, with just the M. That would be sweet. That would be awesome. I'll bet somebody does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, I, maybe I will send them an email. Because I, I know maybe Walmart, I will send them. my Walmart's got Mossy Oak or Mossy Oak Breakup or Realtree uh, wrapping paper. They, Seriously? They a, yes, they had wrapping paper, and then they also had um, uh, a whole. They have a whole selection. Off, you've ever seen a bedding. You can do your entire room in mossy oak breakup. The, the yes. comforter, the 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 curtains. They have lesser expensive versions of that now that you could buy. It's like their Home Trends brand. They actually do the the mossy oak thing or the real tree, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we did that one year for Christmas. We went to Bass Pro and got the bed set, the the camo bed set. But thanks, Travis. Now I think I might. Go to Walmart and look for wrapping paper because if I could use that yeah. wrapping paper for all that, that would be awesome. Go, so thank you back, very much. Kind of go around the hunting area and if they have like a special pallet out, they might have a box of it sitting out for you. So there you go. Oh, it won't be in the it won't be in the seasonal gift wrap area. Being no, the hunting this was area. back in the hunting area. This was back over by the hunting stuff. It was kind of backward because they got that little pallet out of like stuff that's going to go on Black Friday. They kind of have a whole bunch of gifty things sitting out there, and they have a. Um, it's got the Mossy Oak logo. Like that's like what I have in my shirt here. It's it's that's what's actually on the package. Okay. All right. Thank you. See, no right problem. out the box, right out the gate. You give me a great and, shopping tip. And you Thanks. you can take that paper when you're done and like lay it over stuff like outdoors. You can use it as kind of a, a covering, you know, as long as it's not raining. So, you know, you can re, you can reuse, you can reuse that wrapping paper. <laughs> All right. But okay. you know what? You make, you make a good point about building up the ARs. Um, it's, it's cool that you're doing that because right now parts, in my opinion, are at an all time low. And as we go into Black Friday, we're going to see the prices drop even more like, PSA is hitting me daily two or three times a day with emails and it is 
unbelievably cheap right now, the stuff you can get. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, Midnight Range TM, what is going on, dude? How you doing? And uh, uh, Pretty good. Not a whole lot going on, you know, getting ready to do some brunch here. So it was uh, 10 o'clock <laughs> East Coast time that you're going to be doing, around 10-ish, you're going to be doing your podcast? Uh, usually, I, yeah, I was doing 10 until The Walking Dead started. The Walking okay. Dead started back up, and it's, that's like 10, 15, 10, 30-ish, whenever... Okay. You know, whenever I can, um, yeah, get the little guy to bed and all that kind of stuff, you know. So I, I <laughs> dad, mentioned dad your show. Stuff. Yeah, I mentioned your show is going to be kind of like a Thanksgiving emergency hotline. Is that the idea? Is that what you're yep. shooting for on Sunday? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Thanks, awesome. Thanksgiving is. Uh, it kind of occurred to me the other day. I was like, no, oh, you know, Thanksgiving is like the biggest food holiday of the year. Everybody associates it with food, so um, I'm kind of hoping that uh, you know we can get some. Some people uh, checking in with uh, you know in the channel to, to maybe hit me up for some for some advice, oh yeah, for some problem solving and, and maybe some ideas. Um, I put out uh, you know a few videos this week that have all been received really well. Uh, I did a turkey Dude. video, uh, part yeah. two, part one and part two, and then a mashed potato video. And uh, I'm hoping to get a stuffing video done in the beginning of the week, um, you know Monday or Tuesday. That's cool Excellent. because, you know, and they're fun to watch. They're short and to the point. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of great cooking videos on YouTube, but it's fun to watch stuff just kind of specifically around one theme that I think is very handy, yeah. especially going into this week. If you volunteer this year and say, all right, we're doing Thanksgiving in my house this year, baby, and you've got to put it all together. You've never done it before. You can screw everything up, and nothing's worse than a mediocre turkey dinner or a dry turkey or, you know, it's, it's yeah, you got to really be careful when you're doing that. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, just, just kind of like my other videos, like, they're not necessarily the most extravagant as far as ingredients or, or whatever. Some of them are, some of them aren't. But like my mashed potato video is just all about how to make a good mashed potato. You know, yeah. here's the here's the thing. Here's what you do. Here's what you don't do. And uh, it's one of those things that gets screwed up pretty easy, you know. And you and you don't really realize that you're that you're making bad decisions. So and, uh, until yeah, it's done, and then you're like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, honey, 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 honey. paste. Honey, go to this my... give me a bag of Idahoans. We screwed up, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, people wonder why did my mashed potatoes turn out watery or why did they turn out yeah. like wallpaper paste? So well, there you go. There you go. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for joining in today. Absolutely. Uh, man. All right, Jim, what can you tell us, man? What is going on? How are you today? I am just enjoying some fall weather for a change here in, here in Texas. Nice. What are you guys around the 40s, 50 degree mark right now? What do you guys uh, got right going now, on? Right now. So our low last night was seven, but basically 70. But uh, oh, I think uh, okay. seven, seven or seventy, seventy, not oh, seven. Oh, okay, okay. I haven't seen seventy since August, so <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't seen single digits since I was a kid. Since you were a kid, yeah. They, come on up here, buddy. Yeah. We're ready to rock, man. We've, oof. All right. Nice no, uh, this this week it's supposed to be you know low in the mid forties, so it's, okay. it's actually okay. going to feel like like autumn around here. That's gonna be awesome, man. That'd be finally open your windows for once, huh? Get your <laughs> maybe oh, yeah. uh, maybe get a, uh, I can't get, wait get a light get jacket out. Get a light jacket out. <laughs> I actually don't even wear a jacket unless it gets down into the lower forties. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a weird Texan, but I mean I like the summers, but I also like to open my windows at night when it's 50, 55 or so outside. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm right there with you, especially if you don't have to deal with the humidity. It's kind of nice too, you know. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, no, but thanks for joining us, Jim. I appreciate you coming uh, by here today. Uh, AWAG, what is up, dude? No problem, buddy. Hi, yeah. AWAG, what's up? How thanks you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. So are you asking for a lot? Are you asking for a lot for the holidays for Christmas this year? Are you hoping that uh, you get a you get a bag full of set me accessories from Santa this year? Is that what's going on? Oh goodness. Uh, <laughs> to tell you the truth, my parents never actually like did the, the whole Santa thing. They're like, yeah, we bought this for you. <laughs> it's like here you go, son. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. Well, guys, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. We got a lot more people that are joining in the chat right now. I think a lot of people are interested in this topic because as you go into holidays, you know, you start to get that that family member that says, "Hey, well, what do you want for Christmas?" Or maybe now it's up to you to figure out what you want to buy. So let's get this out right now. Are you guys seeing any just awesome holiday deals being advertised at any of the big box stores, or maybe your Local gun dealers are going to have some good specials. Is there anything you guys have seen so far? Because I know the Cabela's ad came out. I We have a Dick Sports for us, but it's a ways away. We do not have Academy in Nebraska. So anything look really good right now? Is there anything out there that's just calling out to you that you guys know you're going to buy? 
Oh wait, before well, you do yeah. that, um, I need to I need to jump out. Okay, going to my son's flag football game, but I will catch the show later. Yeah, thanks guys. Uh, have a good show. And Squid, we've got your list, and I'll run through your list at some point during the show. I've got it in the internal chat, so I will share your list with everybody. She got some really good ideas. There's a couple in there that I wasn't even thinking of this morning when I was when I was com- coming up with my own list. So thank you. I can verify any or all of those items will fit in a stocking. And, you know, they're a good price point, a little bit of everything, as little or as much as you want to spend. So I think that's really cool because you got a nice everything from a buck to however much, whatever your budget is. And most of that stuff can be found in the hunting department at Walmart. Exactly. Exactly. And you're good to go. All right. Later, guys. Uh Very cool, man. Take care, man. Take care. Take care. Um, Okay. We do have one quick question for midnight. Uh, uh, Travis, uh, do you have anything planned to cover dessert? Good good dessert ideas. Are you going to cover anything at all? Um, probably you, not. Actually. I know you posted some videos. Um, could we could we get a last minute quick video on how to make a homemade pumpkin pie? Because I know Ooh. it's not. If you can, I might throw one together because I've got my grandma's recipe and it's not hard to do. Yeah, um, I can give it a shot. I can't make a whole lot of promises. I got. Um, oh, I know. It's, I know. It's actually for me to get the you know four videos done within a week is pretty tough. That's. Oh, Every yeah. video that I do is less sleep that I get. So no, dude, I, trust me, man. Yeah. I know I'll burn. I'll burn five or six hours yeah. on one for one fifteen yeah. minute video. It's ridiculous. No, um, I hear you, dude. No, yeah. I, 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 um, no, I can try and throw something together. I honestly, um, for me, uh, you know, my our, our f- holidays have always been, you know, everything before dessert. Dessert is usually kind of an afterthought. I don't know. Yeah. It's always been like that for us. But um, I like all the food in Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. And then my, my wife loves this one brand of pecan pie that, that we get. So like honestly it's one of those things where it's like if it isn't broke, don't fix it and she loves it. So we always yeah, get one of those. Pecan <laughs> pie, I mean it's it, it's it generally they all taste about the same. I mean there are some differences between them, but anyway, we'll all right, we'll hold off on the food chat, but keep that in mind. Just don't be offended if I post a pumpkin pie video in the next forty eight hours, all right? No, that's cool. Hey man, whatever right, it, cool. man. That that's what it's all about. Have fun. And, I, and I'm, I'm terrified at the critique you're going to give me as you watch me prepare this. I want you to know that right now. So. He's got to mail me a chunk, and then I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, I will do that. Or you come here. You can eat the whole damn thing. I don't care. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to the let's get back to the to the gift talk. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, any awesome gun deals right now? Because I'm seeing uh-huh. Heritage Rough Riders popping up anywhere between ninety nine and one hundred thirty nine dollars. Uh, guys. Fire well, away. it's sort of it's sort of gun uh, related. Classic Firearms has oh yeah AR barrels that are like incredibly cheap. I built um, my 16 inch AR with a stainless steel heavy barrel. It's a one and seven twist, five five six chambering. Yeah, uh, I love that thing. It's so it's it's actually a really good barrel for the price. I think I paid like 50 bucks for it. Oh wow! But it's, okay, it's there's one right there. So- steel. Gun parts, it's, barrels, you know somebody doing an AR build, you know somebody that's a gunsmith, you know, you want to give somebody an idea for something to do, start them off with a part and let them go from there. Yeah. Pretty Very much. cool. So that fit, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could also go to Travis for bulk carrier groups. <laughs> hey, there you go. I can I can send them to you. There you go. Uh, yeah, parts, you know, and sign up, sign up. Now's a good time to reactivate your emails from, say, Palmetto State or Primary Arms or Classic Firearms because you're going to be – Primary Arms sends me two to three emails a day. PSA is at least two emails a day, and they'll have some good deals that will literally sell out in a couple hours. So we're going to give you some, some places to go. PSA, Primary Arms, Classic Firearms. Again, shop local. Always try to shop local. Go hit your local gun store and see if they don't have anything. Maybe get a good deal on a nice used gun for somebody, maybe for a kid or a family member you want to get into shooting or – you know, for yourself or whatever, or give some good ideas, you know, start generating some ideas. But if you want people to pick up stuff for you, you know, you want to give them some links of places to go. I know on Amazon, they're kind of limited with their shooting stuff uh, from time to time. Uh, You can set up a public uh, wish list that people can come view if they want to, or you can tell people, hey, go make a list on Amazon of stuff you would like me to get, get you, you know, and then, and then you can go view their public uh, wish list. And then from there, it's easy to figure out what they want, because it's not a good idea to just go buy stuff if you have no idea, you know, what to get them. But maybe you got some ideas on how to start them at the same time. So, um, any other good deals you guys are seeing right now? Anybody want to chime in? If you if you got kids to buy for, there mm-hmm. is at, at Target there is a, a Nerf gun. Yep. Uh, that I got the grandson for for his birthday. It's thirty uh-huh. bucks. It's called the Zombie Strike Duminator. That thing. Yeah. I, I almost yeah, I almost didn't give it to him. 
You know, I, <laughs> it's that Jim, cool. you read my mind because that was the literally the first thing right here for children. I said uh, pro firearm ideas, Nerf gun. So here's the deal with this. Chat. It's it's freaking awesome. Kids kids need to play guns. Okay, kids need to play guns, and uh, it gets them outdoors. It gets them excited about firearms. Now you need to shift over to reality when it comes time to hand them that real pistol and say, okay, we don't wave this around. We don't run around and walk up to our friends with it, you know. But I remember playing army when I was a kid. I lived in an apartment complex. I had no brothers and sisters, so my friends and I would play army all the time. And what we had back in the day were full size, full scale. Uh, replica firearms that were electric water guns. Do you remember those back in the day? They were battery powered. They were not safety colored. I don't know how I'm still alive. We had cap guns and water guns that were all black and did not have the orange plugs on the end of them. And But I remember we used to play for hours and hours. And kids, kids are excited about Nerf guns. There's videos on how to mod them. There's uh, all these, there's chain gun versions of them you can buy. There's bolt action yeah. versions of them you can buy. Um, also, your, go to your, like, your local, like your TSC, Tractor Supply Company, Orslands, bomb guards those farm supply places they tend to have a good section of like wooden guns and then also like realistic hunting uh, cabela's has a section too of, of like they look like they look like like realistic hunting firearms but they shoot the nerf darts um i did that parody video on the 338 nerf pua and that was a little bolt action uh dart gun that shoots the nerf darts and uh, I, I got that at my local farm supply store and they also have shotguns that have shot shells that shoot the darts and you can eject the casing when you're done and, uh, and so, yeah, so, I mean, there's Nerf guns are an awesome idea. Now, what is it about the zombie one that here, it's like, it's like a revolving, it's like a revolver of revolvers. It's like got, okay. it's got a revolver barrel, but then you, you pull a bigger trigger underneath that, oh that flips it around to a okay. different revolver uh, cylinder. We're going to go ahead and screen share this real quick. Cause you guys have got to see this thing. Here you go. It is too oh freaking cool. Isn't it that shoots awesome? Back. I mean, you can, you can get that thing, you can get that thing going. <laughs> It's got that that hand grip, that foregrip. Okay, now that makes it an S. It, that's an SBR. So you got to make sure you got your. Uh, you have to have your 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 license on that, right? You have to have your your tag on oh, that. Yeah, you got to get a tag stamp for this thing. Yo, somebody's what gonna make that? a real one of them. What what is that? <laughs> is that like how you cock the you thing? Is that the so the 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 trigger at the bottom is how you flip to the next uh, cylinder. Oh, is, you, okay. is you flip the bigger cylinder? It's like I mean, look a, at this guy. Look like at this guy. He is ready to like rock. Look at this cylinder. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that approach. Look at boom. Check that out. Look at. <laughs> you can you can lay down some pretty rapid just, fire with this thing too, hey, man. Kid, watch watch where you're flashing that thing, son. There you go. <laughs> so if you buy hey, wait, your child, does he have this, a finger on the trigger? Uh oh yeah always. Yep. Of there course. you go. <laughs> man. Trigger discipline. Oh man. So anyway, Nerf guns, awesome idea for the children. Look at that. No, I mean he needs to definitely work on his on his. Okay. Can I say something yeah. about about the um about the Nerf guns? If you are going to buy a Nerf gun, please inform your child that it is called a magazine, not a clip. Because yes. that's what Nerf does. Everything that they put on there says clip. And I'm like, stop. Oh. Yeah. oh. I'm actually using this thing right here to teach my my grandson about uh trigger discipline and where you point it and not. so we're already starting uh let's see Joe okay Joe's mount door is not a big believer of toy guns like nerf teaches bad gun safety um, Gelsma, you know what? If you were to start the kid off with the toy guns and real guns, if you could integrate it into real firearms and say, okay, you're used to playing with this now, let's talk about how you handle the real thing. Um, yeah, with kids, it's going to be hard to draw that line between this is not a toy and this is a toy. We're thinking, you know, young kids, you know, five, six, seven years old that like to just run around the neighborhood and play, whatever. Um, you've got a good point. You, you got, and you got to be careful with them. Plus, they need to be safe with them themselves. But just, again, just an idea or play around the house, set up targets around the house for them to shoot at. It'll give them a chance to kind of learn. Just how to, I mean, just just getting close to. I mean, that's that was one of my some of my earliest memories were playing with toy guns as a kid. And I mean, like I said, I'm I'm surprised I'm still alive because of how realistic they were back in the day. Um, what other good deals are out there, guys? What else? Uh, or has anybody else seen anything else? I will, like I said, I always plug my local gun store, but if you're looking for a compact, or you're looking for, yeah, a compact, a concealed carry pistol to buy for a friend or a family member, um, DE Guns in Lincoln, Nebraska has the PT-111G2 for 180 bucks with $20 shipping, which means with that and a transfer fee, you could get one out the door for about $225. Uh, and you wouldn't have to pay sales tax on it because it would be paid online uh, in another state. Well, you might get out of sales tax. So the PT-111 G2 is a great gun to consider. These are just awesome. Uh, now, this is the flat dark earth version of it. But uh, these are these are just great little pistols if you want to get somebody a nice concealed carry gun. Uh, let's Okay, let's get into some, uh, some more ideas for kids. What else is good for kids? Well, what do you guys think? I'm an old dude. 
Yeah, man. And I go old school with BB guns. BB guns, pellet guns. Now, that is good. That is the nice step up because not only are you going to teach them about the legality of using that gun because you use it in town and a lot of places it's considered discharging. You know, I mean, a lot of places are they're not allowed to be fired within city limits, you know, outside of your home. OK, so it's good to teach the kids about basic gun handling, basic gun safety. They're inexpensive to get into. They can shoot all day. If you got some land out back that the kids can shoot at my I got a good friend of mine that teaches with me and he literally his kids cross the street. They are out of city limits and they have a field right there. 15 feet from their front yard, they can set up a target and legally shoot their BB guns and nobody can do anything about it because it's just open land. They're not they're not within city limits. It kind of blows my mind. And the funny part is if they lived across the street, the kids would get the country driving permits to drive to school. I just find that hilarious. But there's, you know, there's a border everywhere for the town that you live in. Um, in Tony, words, what those, do you think? In, go ahead, Tony. CO2 pistols are a cheap way to start them on and you know you can buy those you can get those co2 tanks on on amazon a lot cheaper than you do buying them in the store i know they sell buckets of them like at walmart but they ended up being like 75 cents a piece um so yeah look around to see if you can buy those co2 cartridges in bulk because that was when i was a kid i had that that was my favorite pelican but man i was always blowing my my uh, allowance money on 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 little co2 tanks to run for the uh the the the, the air the, the bb gun and the the pellet gun so uh, we have a good Jorge Cortez says airsoft is great. Airsoft is cool, but man, you can really start to blow the budget on airsoft. I'm not against it at all, but man, if you get into some of those realistic models, you're spending almost as much as you do for an entry level firearm. So airsoft yeah. is cool. Even just a basic twenty dollar Crossman airsoft gun that that's cool, especially if you know that the kid might move to that model of firearm down the road, like a Beretta ninety two style or a nineteen eleven style. They make Sig makes a uh, an airsoft style gun. You can well, you can get an airsoft gun after just about any kind of model of firearm that's out there. Yep. And doesn't I haven't thought about that. Doesn't, time. It? Yeah. Is, uh, doesn't I, it Sig I, actually I, make? Go ahead. Up. I was just saying, doesn't Sig actually make a, an actual airsoft gun? But yep. it's actually made by Sig Sauer. It's like a P two fifty or a P three twenty, one of those that. They make a like P three twenty gun. gun. Yep, yep. Or does Umarex make them for them? Does Umarex manufacture them? Because yeah, I know they're about a hundred dollars for Sig. Yeah, yeah. I but was they thinking do... that there was one that actually came from Sig. That's like two or three hundred bucks, and it's oh, it's an exact it's like replica. Like other... Yeah, but it's it's like an actual. It'll fit the same holsters and everything. It's just an airsoft version of it, right? I I almost, yeah. I almost bought one of those from Academy. I was I was looking. The wife wanted a BB gun actually, so I, I bought her a BB rifle. But I saw that and I was like. Man. <laughs> you know, and you can get um, traps. You can get traps for those. So if you can safely do it in your home, you could safely shoot your BB or pellet gun in your home because they do have the pellet traps and BB traps. You could have, if you had a, a utility room or you had some sort of a hallway you could set up, you could do it the right way carefully. You know, maybe put a tarp up behind the wall or in front of the wall so your kid could practice. So if you got a long winter and you want to work on handling or gun, gun safety or just basic trigger adjust you know just getting used to shooting a gun i mean that yeah bb guns airsoft guns um not a bad idea okay i'm going to show jim's got a picture of that six hour p320 uh co2 powered air pistol and like i said if you go on ebay there are airsoft guns for any kind of model that you want to get now this one i just yeah, saw this well, one at cabela's jim uh a couple days ago when i was there let's bring this if, up here you go guys infinity screen there you go what do you think of that that's nice now it doesn't have the highest ratings. We're gonna have to see what people are complaining about, but that you, you got to go. Off. I mean, you're on, you're better off just trying it for yourself, just seeing what you think. So ninety nine dollars, yeah. and it's basically full size. Looks just like a three twenty. If you want to get into airsoft as like sort of like that. See, airsoft I see is a, an age range between like ten years old and like sixteen years old. Um, you can if say your son's. Is like, hey, I wanna, I wanna shoot an AK or an AR-15 or something, and you don't entirely feel comfortable. I mean, this is from my experience. Is I told my parents, I was like, hey, I wanna shoot a real gun. And they're like, nah, we can't do that, because I wasn't old enough to buy a, a a real gun at the time. So I said, well, can I get an airsoft gun instead? So I got a little um, M4 uh, airsoft gun. It had the oh, yeah. it had the little fun switch on it, so I I got to play around with that. Very but cool. It's 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 a good training tool, and uh, I actually now have 
an AK-74 airsoft gun that I use as a training tool for my real AK-74 for when I go to these airsoft events, I can use that as like almost a host gun that I can basically train on. You know, an airsoft is a nice, I mean, that, man, you want to get a kid into something full size, they can get used to the heft, they can get used to the style, the, 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 the manual of operations on that firearm, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, and there is a great place for airsoft as a training tool. I don't disagree with you on that. I think it's definitely a good one. Um, Rich White makes a really good point out here. Smith & Wesson makes a 22 that feels just like a standard M&P in hand. Okay, you've got that. You've also got uh, GSG that makes the Firefly, which is basically the six-hour Mosquito. So looking at a nice semi-automatic uh, 22 pistol to buy for the kid or the family member who wants to get into firearms and maybe is a little recoil sensitive or wants to work their way up the ladder getting used to firearms. I was just thinking about buying a GSG Mosquito for just to take with me to the range whenever a family member comes with me that wants to shoot that like my mom, my mom, I'd like to see her get a concealed carry permit. She doesn't have one yet. And I thought that'd be a good way to start her off because I'll tell you right now, I shot a six hour Mosquito. I did a range video on it and it was like nothing for recoil. I literally didn't even know that the thing went off, which could be good or bad. But when you fire it, I mean, it's so low on the recoil because it's such a beefy slide on the top that that's anybody's recoil sensitive. It'll make them have fun and not be worried about the recoil or, you know, the, the shock of the gun going off until they get used to it. So consider going with one of those. I think the Fireflies are $200. Um, the six hour mosquitoes are considerably more expensive, even though they're made by the same company. They're made by GSG uh, for SIG. They were made after a certain point. So consider a nice 22 um, handgun to start the kids off or one of the root mark fours or a browning buck mark if you're wanting to start the kid on hunting don't mm -hmm. overlook the keystone cricket either oh That's yes the they make a ton of, you're talking about the single the single shot 22 rifle right yes we're on the right yeah because they make those in a variety of variants and colors and styles they're like 79 dollars at walmart 89 dollars at walmart there's such yeah. a or and now okay we get a nice 22 bolt action rifle or a semi-automatic i'd say bolt because it kind of slows down the kids' ammo consumption. It'll limit the number of mag dumps they want to do. Um, like a nice Savage Mark II F or maybe a, a Marlin or, well, you know. The I, Savage Rascal is for if you have smaller kids. Okay. Okay. So we got the Cricket. We got the Savage Rascal. Those are all good ideas. The, yeah. The Savage Mark II F is basically, I mean, it's about the same length as a standard hunting rifle. And it's got and not, not as much weight, but it's still... You know, it's it, adults. I think it'll be maybe a little more suited for adults. Look into some of the youth models. Uh, youth model shotguns are always very cool. I know that uh, Remington and also Stoger make youth models. Remington makes one. It's either Remington or, yeah, Remington makes one, I think, for lefties also. They make a left ejection youth model pump shotgun in, in 20 gauge and maybe four, I don't know about 410, but I know they make them in 20. And so they've got a shorter stock, they've got a shorter barrel. Um, you know, if you got a kid that's a lefty and you want to get them into to shot shell shooting, uh, clay pigeons, and so on, so that's another good idea. Can I? I'm a firm believer. Thirty nine in youth. What's that? Marlin did uh, offer the thirty nine in youth. Okay. Oh, Henry Golden Boy. Right, and they make that in a twenty two. They, you know, those are relatively small. I mean, a little, little hefty, but you want something durable. What else, guys? I'm a firm believer. When you're first starting out, a kid, I believe in a single shot twenty two, yep. just a bold action single shot. Yep. Um, or if you want to do shotgun, like a New England break top, single oh, yeah. shot shotgun, you know, with the armor on it. I mean, just to teach them, you know, the, the safety, number one, and then you're going to slow down ammo cons consumption. But, you know, once it goes off, then as they're learning, you know, if, if they do a, a faux pas where they turn around and they haven't, you know, kept the muzzle pointed down range or whatever, uh, you know for a fact that there's not any chance whatsoever that this is going to be a threat until you can – teach them that discipline um you know a lot of people don't have the nerf guns a lot of people don't have the, the airsoft or whatever to teach you know trigger finger discipline and, and muzzle discipline and all that to begin with and so if, if your first your kid's first experience uh with with any kind of a gun is a you know an actual like a like a rimfire or something like that at the range then just having a, a either a single shot or if it's magazine fed just one at a time in the magazine you know is a great way to start them out too that way, you just eliminate the chance of, of any bad thing happening after that initial shot. That's why I'm a fan of the cricket, because it's a mm -hmm. single shot, no magazine. Uh, Heritage Rough Rider, nice single action, single yeah. not single shot, but single action revolver where if they fire it and freak out and drop it, you're going to be okay. You know, I mean that. Um, but, you know, anybody, if you're ever taking anybody to the range for the first time, that first shot they do, 
just put one in the mag because you don't know if they're going to fumble it or throw it or drop it or wave it at you or wave it at somebody else. One round, just a little gun safety right now because there might be people buying a gun for their kid for the first time or a spouse or significant other, whatever. Um, you know, practice a little gun safety the first time you take it. You don't know how they're going to react. I did that with my best friend and, and uh, his wife. Uh, because I didn't, you know, they'd never fired guns before. It had been a long time since my buddy had fired a gun. And we just did one shot, one round. And they're like, oh, that's it? I'm like, yep, that's it. And then we went back to a full mag after that. Um, okay, more ideas for kids, guys. I'm thinking gear, hunting gear. Another good one I thought about, I wrote this down. How about getting them set up with their own range box? You know, I'm going to get them some patches, some cleaning swabs, a cleaning kit, a little shooter's box. Uh, you know, just the basic supplies that they need to kind of get themselves up so they can clean their own guns instead of you. Any ideas on that, guys? Uh, shooter's box for the kids? I think that's pretty good. I mean, give them a little box of ammo or something and then have... Yep. Uh, uh, well, well, and, and not only that... Show them how to clean the, um, the firearm, you know. I think, that too, that's really a, a larger... Actually, like, a larger range box is kind of nice, too, if... Um, yeah. For a kid, and I know for myself, it's like... If you have a spot for something... If you have a spot for everything, then everything will be in its spot. You yep. know what I mean? If you yep. if you teach them that that range box is where they keep their, you know, their like you said, their patches, their their rod, their, you know, their their um, ear protection, their eye protection. You know, if if they have to have a guest pass to go to the range with you, they keep their guest pass in there, and and it kind of teaches them a little organization. But yep. um, you know, it's uh it's nice for you too because you know, you that. That when, when you're going to the range, you pick up their box, you look in their box and make sure they have everything. And if they don't, you, you send them on the scavenger hunt to get everything they need. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share with you guys. My wife surprised me this surprised me with this about seven or eight years ago, and this is one of the best things you can spend your money on, in my opinion. This is the MTM Sight and Clean Gun Rest. Um, I believe I don't know if this includes the box also, but you want to double check. But you get the box and you get the you get the rest, which has a lid that goes over the top here. And you take these little you know, you take your little holders out. Everything stores inside the box, and this uh, this sits towards the top. The rest itself does. So you've got that whole space underneath. I have a full size gun cleaning kit underneath mine. I've got the little pegs that you set the gun in. I've got a, I've got a couple cans of cleaner patches. This is pretty much my standard issue box when I go to the range. Um, and this is this is 70 bucks well spent. This sucker is durable. I've beaten the heck out of mine. And you can sight your guns in with it. You can clean your guns with it. I mean, it's a little big and cumbersome maybe for a small child, but it would be a good investment for a good range box for somebody because they might just be using bags when they go out. And there's nothing wrong with range bags and duffel bags and stuff. But this thing is there's boxes and compartments and spaces for it. I have a box sitting right over here off to my right. And um, it's it's a fantastic gun box for the money. It's seventy bucks, but it's durable. I mean, it's those are awesome. I've Very handy videos. Is yeah, it, that, is, is it good enough? I mean, for real, for like really sighting in, it's oh yes. durable enough to handle all that. If you watch all my cleaning videos up until about the last six months ago, that's all I ever used for sighting in my guns. In fact, a couple times I forgot my lead slit. I I just use that. Yeah, you can you can rest your arm across it. You could put a sandbag across the middle of it while your gun sits up on the top. Um, it doesn't really move a whole lot. You can just use one of the pegs and rust the gun in it. You could sandbag from the from the rear if you want to to keep the gun steady. Um, I've that's all I used the first I don't know, first three or four years that I had my firearms. That's all I would use just because I thought, oh, we can side in and I can clean with it, you know. And it yeah, it's fine. I don't know about huge caliber rifles. I mean, I think I fired a little bit of everything through. It works great with semi autos, and it, and it has full adjustability for height on the front and the back, which is cool. So you can get a higher angle or a lower angle. You can set it exactly how you want it. It just doesn't sit there. Um, it actually has some adjustability on it. So let me turn off the camera. I'm going to grab it. You guys chat for a second about more ideas. I'll be right back. Has anybody looked at, has, has anybody looked at this thing yet? Everybody go at once. Yeah, I'll talk one. Okay. Uh, one of the things I saw on PSA that uh, I think is a really good idea, and I've seen it a few times recently, was the the if if you're into Berettas, they have a 92 FS for 4.49. Yep, yep. It's uh, that's, and don't it's forget not, you can get those surplus ones for what 2.99, uh, like a J and J and G sales, and some of those other. If you want to get somebody like, but for 100 bucks more, you can get. Well, not 200 bucks more. I guess you can get a brand new one. Um, All right. That's yeah. That's, I know, that's, um, that's an awesome. That's an awesome pistol. I know. I've uh, I've talked about gun dot 
It used to be Slick Guns. Now it's Gun Deals on mm-hmm. the app. The app on my phone. I was looking on that last night, and uh, they have a link now, to, just for right now. That's like Black Friday ads. So if you go on that app, you can click on Black Friday, and it'll show you Dicks, Dunham's, Cabela's, oh, yeah. Bass Pro Shop, which is kind of cool. And then you can scroll through their flyers. Yeah, yeah. I was looking through that last night. There's a couple. There's a couple things on on my radar, but I don't know. I'll be able to get at any of them. <laughs> but um, yeah, it doesn't stop you from window shopping. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So uh, here's that sight and clean, guys. This is what it looks like. I'll just kind of hold up in front of the camera. You've got adjustability. I guess you have adjustability on the front. You can adjust it up to about three, four inches. And then this lid, I don't want to take the lid off, but you've got compartments in here that you can take this off. And I got stuff stored in baggies. I've got my little Allen wrenches. I've got my brushes. Uh, and then you've got the little spots in the front where you can throw stuff if you want it. Um, I always keep a, an AR and an AK sight tool, front sight tool, just sitting right here in the front. Because I never know if I'm going to. Now, you can buy this by itself. And I think this is like 40 But I think if you buy the whole box, it's like $70. And then you can just take this out if you don't want it. And so this is this sucker. I mean, it's got a little bit. Of, and if you put stuff in it, it's got a little bit of weight in it also. And uh, I've I've been very. And this thing's about eight years old at this point. I've beaten the heck out of it. And it still holds up really well. Now, see, I've got one of the same brand. But it's an actual just a side-in vest with a strap on it for a taming recoil. It's meant to be like a lead slip where you put weight in it. That works pretty damn good too. Yeah, that I know that they make one. I know they make one that's maybe a little more designed. You said just I just walked away from the, the speaker for a second here. You said they make one that's a little they make one just for siding in. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, uh, got a strap fixed on the back side of it that you put around the rear or the butt of the gun so it teams the recoil it works like a lead sled yeah when it's all plastic uh you know a lead sled is another good idea i've got a lead sled solo and i think i paid 75 dollars from it from amazon and then got to spend like 40 on the bag of lead and the little bag to put that in but the bag but that's that was that's a great investment too just for siding in you save so much money if you use a lead sled to side in nothing wrong with sandbags but I like to be able to just set stuff down and kind of come back to it, especially when I'm filming videos. It's more convenient uh, for me to use a lead sled. But those are those are nice because you can dial it in so much faster than you normally do. Because I I I do so many rounds trying to set my gun up and keep it consistent. And um, the lead sled is always a good idea. They they assemble in about fifteen or twenty minutes. I got uh, one of those a couple of years ago for Christmas from my wife's parents, and that that's been been one of the best gifts that I have gotten here in recent years. Um, I still need to get a couple bags of shot so I can weight it down because even even my 243, you know, it doesn't recoil much, but it'll it'll jump the lead sled around to where, you know, I'm I'm not returning back to to the same you know the same position every time. I wanna I wanna weight it down, but yeah, that lead sled. I think I've got the same one that you do from from watching your video, and, and yeah, that was that's a great little gift. Anybody should have one of those, even if you don't need it to tame the recoil. It's just nice to hold the rifle steady. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, you have a compartment. If you guys can, can you guys see that on the screen? Is it there for you? Yeah. It might be a little bit small for you. Okay, so you've got a spot right here in the middle where you can drop your bag of shot, or your if you got some square weights that you buy, like from an old weight set, uh, you can drop that right there. And what's nice about the solo is it's curved around the side here, so you can use it with semi-autos and magazines. Now, the bag of shot and a thirty-round magazine is a bit of a tight pinch, so I tend to use ten and twenty-round magazines when I side in my semi-autos, my ARs and AKs. Uh, but yeah, it it works well. Now, there's the only adjustability you have from front to back is the part up in the front here where your handguard rests, you can rotate that around for about an extra three inches. So a really short firearm is not going to fit on here. But as you can see in the picture, a standard rifle, an AK, an AR. Now, the only other issue I run into with this, if you have a vertical foregrip or an angle foregrip, that can get in the way of the front straps. You have to kind of think before you go to the range, is the thing even going to sit in there before you go? So that way you're not, a, not at the range trying to take off your handguard and take the vertical foregrip off so but these are these are awesome 71.99 i probably saved 71 dollars in ammo I and mean, john you know 243 is not cheap <laughs> no. you're looking at no, a, it's, a, well, a buck it's not expensive now. compared to a lot of calibers yeah, that's why yeah. i shoot it but uh but yeah but, still that that you know 18 20 bucks a box it adds up being able to being able to dial it in like that's definitely a good idea. Okay, what about some more ideas for kids? Um, I was thinking camo if they need some camo or maybe some safety gear. 
um, maybe get them a couple different sets of, of, of hunting clothes, hunting gear. What are, what are some other ideas for kids? What else would be good? Uh, I would say a spotting scope because me Ooh. as a kid, I love looking at far ranges. I, oh, I yeah. love looking at like, <clears throat> it, it doesn't even necessarily have to be about guns. Like just a spotting scope to be able to, I don't know if you have a big backyard, look at the squirrel that's like a hundred yards out or, you yeah. know, being a creep on your neighbor. What? Um, hmm. <laughs> get, hey, you know what? Get a good set of binoculars for the kid or a nice pair of Black Friday binoculars. <laughs> I help teach them how to spot birds, how to teach them how to spot deer or turkey or, you know, anything like just go in the backyard. If you have a wooded area, go out and just do some bird watch and just look and see what's in your area. Mm -hmm. Ducks, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of possibilities. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I was, I, I had that on my list too for not necessarily for kids, you know what I mean? But yeah. um, one of the things that I kept thinking of when I was doing a list here is I'm a super practical person. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of stuff that I want that I won't buy for myself because I'm like, ah, that's not all that practical or I won't use it that much. So when I buy stuff for other people, I try and take that into account. And I think, you know, I want a chronograph, but I probably won't buy one for myself. I want a spotting scope, but I probably won't buy one for myself. Yeah, you know, yeah. I want to, I want, <clears throat> I really like the, um, I've seen them in person. I really want to get one of the Tipton Ultimate Ultra Gun Vices. Mm-hmm. Those are great, but I don't know that I'll buy one for myself. But every time I do something with my damn gun, I'm like, man, I wish I had one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so for me, it's like I like people to buy me stuff that I that is like not maybe the most practical thing, but I want it anyway. You know, it's just kind of oh cool. yeah, that, that makes that makes them that makes them more fun. Um. Okay. Let's get now that we've got, oh go ahead guys yeah. I posted a link in the side chat to that rest that I got. I don't know how to share it so. Okay, I can bring it up real quick and look at it. We'll kind of, oh yeah, definitely, that's different. Let me go into screen share here. Uh, so that's pretty much going to be it for kids. We've talked about some toys, airsoft, BBs, pellet guns, uh, a nice 22, uh, maybe get a nice a nice semi-auto like, like an M&P 22 or uh, a GSG Mosquito 22 semi-auto, a nice bolt action. So this is what, yeah, this is significantly different from what I have, Tony, but I like that. It's got that compartment there in the middle. This is more of a permanent setup. Um, that compartment there in the middle, I'm looking at this. So you might, yeah, you could put some, you could put a weight in there if you wanted to, to kind of weigh it down a little bit. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any kind of a strap going across the, the front of it, which would be nice, but it's not necessary, you know? Um, now I have another idea. Um, if you yeah. want to go above and beyond for your child, um, you can okay. build them an AR and CMMG makes 22 conversions for yep. it. So you can make it as personal as possible. There you go. There, that's another nice one. Yeah, build and then when they're ready, uh, swap out the bolt carrier group and get them the the proper magazines or have that stuff on standby when they're radu ready to graduate up. They'll be all used to the manual of arms of that firearm. They'll be used to cleaning it, funk, you know, uh, problem solving with it, uh, getting it dialed in, proper handling and use and storage and safety, and then upgrade. You know, I, I would say go with the regular. The fact that you can get a PSA AR for about three hundred sixty dollars. Um, maybe even a little bit less right now if you're checking their prices, and then get the conversion kit for about 130 bucks. Let them let them practice on 22 LR for a while, and then and then graduate up to 556. That would be a really cool idea, you know. That would be nice. Um, or get get a kit and build them an AR together. Build an AR with them. I know that Ghost Tactical is going to do that with his daughter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Squib is going to be building a series of ARs himself, and then get that 22 conversion kit. Read around a little bit and make sure it's going to run okay, and see if you need to use any kind of special, maybe high velocity ammo or CCI. Make sure you've got the right ammo. Don't go buy the cheapest ammo you can afford. Make sure you get something that's going to work with it. Um, but uh, yeah, a nice 22 AR-15 uh, or conversion kit. I know Kiapa makes a 22 AK-47. If you want to get them on an AK pattern rifle, those are like $200, I think. Uh, and it's got wood stock and wood foregrip, and it's got a it's got the 30 round magazine on it. Um, and I don't know if that's it might only be 10 round for the for the 22 version of it, but you know, there's there's an idea there too. All right. Anything else before we move over to friends buying buying gift ideas for friends? Any ideas there, guys? Anything else with the, with the I, kids before we move on? I would say one last thing for yep. kids: get yep. them their own ear pro and eye pro. Get something oh. the size for them. Yes. And don't be afraid to spend some money on this because if I mean, again, we're we're number one, we're promoting safety, but two, we want to have we want to have fun. We want them to have fun. And if, if they're constantly fiddling with, you know, their glasses are too big for their head or their, 
their uh, their gun muffs are too big for their head or something like that, then they're they're not concentrating number one on the first thing, which is safety, and they're not going to have as much fun. And uh, you know, if you've got a real small child, get something that's going to fit them, and then just kind of you know keep paying attention as they grow. You know, get them get them stuff that's going to fit them as as they go. And I mean, if you've got more kids, you can hand them down or or. Yep. Again, you can re-gift those. They're not going to be used very much. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, yeah. eventually, eventually, get up to something. You know, like some some good electronic gun muffs, <laughs> where you can still talk to them in this area um, without you guys having to yell. And I just got, I just picked a couple of those up here uh, just yesterday. I actually saw them and already had them on sale, and I got a couple of Caldwell set the Caldwell uh, gun muffs, electronic uh, for my wife and I. Uh, she actually made the trip up here with me this this weekend, and we're going to go do some just shoot some, some handguns and stuff here after a while, hopefully today. And uh, I said, you know, this would sure help uh, tame that sound because half of the reason why she's not crazy about shooting yet is, you know, just the sound itself. Um, so I said, we'll be able to talk to each other. You can hear everything I say without yelling. And yet it's, it's not going to, it's not going to hurt your ears. And, and she said, yeah, let's get those. Yeah. So quality. I, pro, I would man, say that's, that, yeah, definitely. I pro, ear pro, especially for the kids and kids size. Yeah, that's the, my grandson. Actually, we tried foam those foam earplugs on him once. Oh my goodness, he hated no, them. I I don't even like them myself. I mean, <laughs> so, I I can't ever seem to get the right. I mean, I'll use them in a pinch, but to get the right kind of seal that you need, it, you can steal. Especially if they start to come out when you're shooting it, it yeah. you could potentially you know damage your hearing also depending on what you're shooting. Um, yeah, so good quality eye pro and ear pro that works for anybody. That's a good gift for anyone. The trick is, for anybody listening, the trick is, if you're going to use the foam earplug, um, I actually used to have to wear those every day at a factory job that I used to have. And anybody that works in a factory, they're going to know this. But those of you that are struggling with either the foam ones or the reusable rubber ones, whatever you're using, if you're going to, when you go to put the thing in your right ear, take your left hand, reach over the top of your head, grab the top of your ear and pull up. That'll open up your ear canal. And then yeah. if it's foam, make sure you pinch and roll that thing tight yep. between your fingers and get it small. Then pull up on your ear, put that in your ear canal, you know, as, as deeply as you comfortably can and still pull it back out and then let it expand and it'll, it'll fill that ear canal back up. And you might see a world of difference in how comfortable they are and how well they work. Okay, yeah, yeah. so that's definitely – because a lot of people just take them and try to squish them in and then they wonder why they don't oh, yeah. work. They wonder why there's not a good enough seal. Hold it in place while it's expanding too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, press up against it so it can expand out in your ear. Yeah, and I have the electronic muffs, but you know, sometimes in the summer, <laughs> it's just oh, they yeah. don't work. Your if your ears can sweat. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it can get it can get pretty bad, especially if you're talking 90, 100 degrees in humidity. You take them off, you're just like, ugh. <laughs> I, I hate the electronic muffs for shooting a rifle with scope. Yeah, that's true. They can get in the way. So you can get some some thin profile. Uh, I know you can get some thinner ones that don't necessarily block out as many decibels, but they still take it down to a safe level. Um, I know I've got some some uh, Allen ones that I use that are a thinner profile than my Winchester ones, which are just like big cups you put like coconuts you put over your ears practically. You know, um, they don't they don't they don't block out as much, but they 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 take it down to a safe level. Those those are actually good gift ideas for those kind of things for not just the kids but for the friends and family. Oh yeah, too. oh yeah. When I bought an AR, we have a, a boy that married into the family, a guy that married into the family. I only have one cousin on my mom's side. I bought him an AR. He's a gun guy. He's a shooter, pistols, hunter, and stuff. He doesn't have an AR. Uh, after I bought him that, they can shoot on 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 the the in laws, the family's land. And so I immediately went and bought two sets of earmuffs, two sets of iPro. I said, that way you guys, whenever you come visit, you know, the parents, you can go out back and shoot. You've got the stuff right there at the house. I've gone there, I've shot a couple times and just grabbed it out of the cupboard. And it's ready to go. So they, it's stuff like that is very practical, very useful. Um, and it's not expensive. I think I spent maybe 30 bucks on two sets of iPro and EarPro for adults. Uh, not 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 electronic EarPro, but good enough where it's it's safe to use outside. Um, okay, let's let's talk about friends. What what's what's good stuff to buy friends that are that are that are gun people, or maybe people you want to make gun people uh, that that might be friends. Any ideas? Like, what are some good ideas for your buddies uh, when it comes to buying holiday gifts that are firearm related? I, I like tools. Uh, okay. That's that's my other that's my other fascination oh. anyway. So, you know, if they're handy and if they they like maintaining their own their own gear anyway you, the neat stuff you can get you can get pin punch you know the punch blocks you can get uh roll pin punches or the the flat 
face mag catch punch for uh or the bolt catch punch for the, the ARs and yeah you know all, a lot of those things are are really handy to have and they don't yep. break the bank I got my best friend buy me a Leatherman uh, wingman because he said I'm his wingman. So he got me a Leatherman wingman, which I keep in my vehicle and I use that as, I mean, I've got a full tool set in the car, but I like to use that just for little things. Um, the Rev, you can sometimes get the Rev for like $20 or $24. And these things are solid, man. And I've actually broken bits off these and contacted Leatherman and they, they, they sent me an envelope to send them the tool and they ended up sending me a brand new pocket tool when I turned it in for uh, repair. They said it's easier for them just to simply uh, send me a brand new pocket tool instead of, uh, sending me the bits to repair it myself. So and they've got a 20 year, 25 year guarantee on these things. I don't think they even care if you call them and say, hey, I got a, I got a loose mechanism on it. They'll, they'll send you an envelope to ship it back to them. So Leatherman pocket tools are a good one for friends. Um, and I want to use this one. Okay. If you've got a local range and you've got friends that are kind of into guns, say you got, say you got a buddy and his wife or a buddy and his significant other or a lady and her husband, whatever, whatever combination. And they, maybe they're starting to get into firearms or they've talked about getting their concealed carry permit or you'd like to see them practice more, uh, get them a gift card if they have such a thing at your local range or get buy them some range time, maybe buy them a nice one hour session with an instructor or buy them the concealed carry class. I know it seems kind of crazy, but I gave my friend a pistol. His wife ended up buying my Glock 17. We went to the range and spent a couple hours there and I paid for the range time for them to just, just go real low pressure, go have a good time. And now they're hooked and now they're gonna be getting their concealed carry permit. Um, Jim, they go to the, the bullet trap down in Dallas. I don't know if you've ever heard of that place before, but I have your, actually, I'd like to go lot, there one day. A lot of your more modern ranges. Well, we'll go shoot there this summer when I come down there. Um, a lot of your more modern ranges have gift cards that they offer. So buy them the class, buy them the concealed carry class. Say, Hey, you know, here, the class is ready. Just take the kids to grandpa and grandma's go get your concealed class done. And when you guys are ready, do the, do the prints, pay the rest of the, the, the cost and go get your concealed carry permit. So I'm thinking about doing that for them for Christmas because that way they can't say no. And this way they can at least have it done. So if they're, if they don't want to ever, ever carry after that, they don't have to, but they, they haven't put the investment in there. I'm doing it to show them that I care about them. So maybe a nice gift card to a local range is a good way to go too. Do you guys have any other ideas for friends? What do you think? What are good things? Firearms well, think, are always good to buy for friends. Ammo is always good to buy for friends. Yeah, magazines. I mean, magazines are awesome because they make great stocking stuffers. Eight bucks, ten bucks. Mags are on sale like crazy right now everywhere. Uh, uh, Travis, do you have any ideas? Yeah, guys. Hey, Ghost is in the house. What's up, man? Hey, I think, um, you know, another one, too. We're talking about ranges and all that. I mean, as simple as paying somebody's range fees for the year would be really cool. You know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just talk to the range master or the range owner and say, I'd like to, I'd like to prepay for this person's already a member. I'd like to pay up a year for him. Can I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Absolutely. Right. Go right ahead, man. Okay, cool. Cool. Ghost, yeah, what man. do you think? What's a good gift to get? Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim, Jim, go ahead. Oh no, I was, uh, it's not strictly gun related, but yeah. you know, EDC gear, there's a, there's a lot of good, uh, I've, I've become a flashlight junkie. Uh, there's, there's a, Amazon has a lot of good flashlights uh, that are reasonably high quality for then that they don't break the bank. Uh, I, yep. I like getting stuff like that for friends. Uh, yeah, flashlights a good choice. And since we're talking friends and adults and grown-ups, knives, pocket knives. Yeah, get pocket a nice knife. pocket knife for um, pocket tools. Pocket knives. Get a nice uh, flipper knife for them, or get them a nice fixed blade knife for. Uh, when they're outside, or if you know they work outside a lot, get them, get them a nice bench mate, or get them a good uh, uh, CRKT or or Spyderco. You know, you got a lot of options for that. Oh, what's bad is I was just poking around and now I see a flashlight I want to buy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, flashlights, man. You can spend five bucks or you can spend five hundred bucks, man. I I just a nice a nice mag light too. Even the non LED ones, you can get those. The little pocket ones are eight dollars, and Walmart carries a camouflage one you can get for eight eighty eight. The non-LED, just little mini mag lights that take uh, two AA batteries. Those are a decent size for working. And you can actually unscrew the cap and it makes a torch. So you can light up a room if you need to, which I think is – I've used that a couple times when our power has gone out. Um, I know um, – sorry, bud. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, man. Um, two years ago, I did um, backpacks with, like, prepper stuff in it for my close family. Oh, cool. Like a like – a, I just went. To, I was at I was at Costco and I bought a couple of backpacks that were really really good. They were like really nice, but they were on sale, really really good price. And then I just started hitting up like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, and I started snagging like 
all those little stocking stuffer type things. Like I bought multi tools that were normally like ten bucks for four bucks. I bought five of those. You know, I bought like I forget, I forget what else I bought. You know, like you know the little the, the whistles, the mirrors, like what, all that little kind of gadgety stuff that's nice. And I wrapped them all individually, and I just put them in the backpack, and I handed them a backpack Christmas morning. I said, "Here you go." <laughs> that was you know, they, they really like that. This is a good point. We have family and friends that have made no emergency preparations whatsoever. So put them together, a little mini bug out bag or a weekend emergency bag. Like really? if they got a jet, put something together with a water filter in it, maybe like yeah. an MRE and maybe, I don't know, put them together something kind of neat, like like a, like an, not a necessarily an SHTF bag, but like, you know, okay, you guys live here. You have no emergency preparations. You have no water. You have no extra food. You're going to be living what's out of your pantry. Here's a little bag you can keep around. If you guys have an emergency, grab them and go. Or throw them in your trunk and go. If you have to evacuate your home, grab this. At least I know you've got food and water and some basic supplies. You know, so put some matches in there. Put a compass in there. Yeah. I don't know. Give them something. Yeah, I mean, that's, and even if it's just even if it's just the bag itself, you can buy a nice thirty dollar bag as one of your gifts. That way, oh, yeah. it's, laying, it's laying around for them. If something ever happens yep. and they want they want something that they're going to shove some stuff in to hit the road, they yep. have a, a nice bag for it at the very least. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, something else you can do is get the things that people don't think about until they need to use them, and that's like packages, targets, things like that. Oh yeah, man. I patches. I mean, I know you can cut up cotton shirts, but I still love a bag of just like the the Allen patches or whatever, or, or whatever uh, hops or whatever hoppies. Um, you know, patches are good. Cans of cleaning, cans of cleaning supplies, supplies are good. So I don't hey, know about hey, cleaning supplies. People are too damn picky. Let's go. If you know somebody uses CLP or REM oil, just get them a can of that. Put a bow on it. Say Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> nice, Rick. What is going on, dude? How you doing, man? I just woke up. I'm sorry. No, dude, you told me you like to catch your rear rest on the weekends. I respect that. You put in some late nights in the other chats, dude. I, you know, I didn't want to bother you. So, um, nice, Rick. Any good ideas for friends or family, firearm related, prep related? What would you recommend we 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 get for those family members as as holiday gifts? Because we moved from children now onto friends. What do you think? Are we getting are, are we giving holiday gifts for the gun people or anybody? Maybe people? you want to get them into guns, or maybe you want to get them some basic supplies. What's just some good good ways to get people started? Maybe into firearms. What would be some suggestions? Okay, if, like go go to like Cabela's or like mm -hmm. I'm gonna use this example. I know people say Night Strike. You're like the official spokesman for them. Go to Cabela's, Palmetto State Armory. Mm -hmm. What other what other you know places where you get your stuff? Get some gift cards and hand them and, and give those gift cards to family members that you may want to get into the sport as well or get them into it and say, here's a gift card. If you can get go there, gift cards at Walmart. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. They can sell right. at gas stations and, uh, right. you know, anywhere. Yeah. Just give them a gift card because odds are there's probably something at these places for them that they didn't know was there. And – they may enjoy going there, seeing things, maybe getting into it themselves. Uh, if you know somebody who's a reloader, I mean, they get that gift card and say, "Here you go, go buy yourself, uh, go buy yourself some powder, go buy yourself some brass, go buy yourself some bullets." Uh, right. you know, if you know somebody, say, or maybe somebody's saving up to get themselves a reloading bench right here. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. maybe give them a gift card they can put towards that reloading bench. So right. I know um, in the past too, I've instead of doing gift cards, if I have done cash. I've gone to the bank to get or gotten the little bands that go around money and I'll write on it like do not open till gun show. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah, I, just, little, yeah. I, I just say gift cards because some people say they don't like giving money because money isn't uh, isn't a real gift or something. I I've, I've had, you know, people say that to me before. I'm just well, like, if you know somebody's saving you know, up for something, they can put it to card. their hand, you know. More, gift cards yeah, are more like love. store credit, mm -hmm. so. Because that, you know, I, I told people, hey, if you're if you're going to get me something, just give me a gift card or cash. I mean, you don't have to give me anything, but if you do, because that allow me to go get what I want, and usually it is firearm related. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, anybody I've ever given a firearm has never refused. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no. Granted, I've done a legal transfer, you know, legal transfers sure. through a dealer, but, uh, you what know. What he says, that's what he says. No, I do. Don't worry about that. It's all good. Well, for private sales for the long guns here, I don't have to worry about that. But for the pistol that I gave to my buddy, we went through and did a, an official transfer. Um, Any pistol that anybody wants to give me as a gift, I will pay the transfer fee. 
There you go. Right. Uh, how would you like a nice rusty CPX two? <laughs> Sky CPX two, the gift that does not go off all year round. Is that the one we have to dig up uh, from uh, underneath the backyard? It's, it is long gone, so don't worry; it'll never be. <laughs> it'll make a nice paperweight. Enough, I was watching a police shooting video the other day on one of these channels I'm subscribed to, and sure enough, the guy had a CPX two. That's what he used to hold his wife hostage in front of a gas station in Las Vegas. I'm like, oh, there you go. The and next, it's working. going up that going up that DOJ list of of uh, <laughs> the next uh, what do you call it? Uh, Circle of firearms or whatever it, you call it. That's going to be up no, the top. No, no, no. Hold up, Travis. Ring of fire. Yeah. It was, it was working? Did, did the SWAT team even bother putting their guns on the guy, or were they just not worried that the gun was even going to go off? I would have said, sir, just give up right now. It's not – no, they, 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 they took him down. They took him down. Two other police officers showed up, and three, three, three officers opened fire on him and killed him. Um, but, yeah, they could have cool. said, sir, there's, why are you doing that? That thing's not going to work, you know? I'm in disbelief <laughs> that that thing was actually working. Well, we no, better off turning it around and clubbing it. You know what? I'll tell you right now. They'll run for a while, but after you start to put some wear and tear on them, they do not age well. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, they After you hit 1,000 rounds, you start looking at extractors wearing out, barrels wearing out. It took a new slide, barrel, and guide rod spring combo to get mine to function. They sent it to me free, but the fact is I had a gun I carried for three years that might not have worked when I needed it to, and that freaked me out. So that's why I quit carrying it. That's why I got rid of it. That's hilarious. So anyway, enough of my problems. Let's get back to the gifts. Let's have some holiday fun discussions. Uh, more gifts for friends. We talked about gift cards to the range, paying for range fees for a buddy. Um, you know, pay pay for them to take their concealed carry classes. Night strike. Um, what else do we have here? I'm just sorry. I'm just I'm just shaming you a little bit there. Uh, magazines. If you know somebody's an AR fan, get them some mags or buy them. You know, if you know somebody that maybe has been on, the, they don't know if they may, they've been talked about maybe uh, building an AR. Buy them a nice upper or get a lower and transfer it. You know, uh, get an eighty percent lower. So here you go. Have fun with this. Figure it out. You know, a lot of possibilities. I found uh, I found a pretty with my father-in-law who's a big gun nut once we get sort of close to christmas i just increase the amount that we bullshit about guns and uh inevitably he'll be like yeah i just got a m1a and that'd be nice and someday i want to put this on it or someday i want to put that on it or i'm looking at these well, that's what you go buy yeah it Simple ain't hard that. to get a gun guy to tell you shit he wants that's what i'm saying man <laughs> I, I mean we, that, that. you know we are the easiest people to shop for. You know, I'm thinking really, we really are. Now, if you want, you got friends that you want to make into gun people, and maybe they've gone with you shooting a couple times. There's a lot you can do there too. You know, I know um, a couple of years a couple of years ago he bought an M1A, and I was like, oh, those are, and it's a nice, really nice M1A with a, a match barrel and everything. I was like, oh yeah. man, you should scope that. Yeah, you should scope that. That'll be a great rifle. He's like, oh yeah, I know. He's like, but the scope mounts are a little pricey. Blah blah blah. And I was like. There goes one guy off the list, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's easy. Um, I want to get Squibb's list out because Squibb's not with us right now. He had to jack says his kids got a flag football game. This is Squibb's list, and he's got some really cool ideas. Boar Snake. All of us want one, but we're all too cheap to buy one. I mean, I've got several, but I'm just saying it took me years to want to actually break down and buy one, even though it was only $10. Gun Oils. AR-15 Front Sight Post Adjustment Tool. There you go. Midwest Industries makes a really nice one for like eight bucks. Makes a good stocking stuff. For, I know I'd like to just keep one in my glove box because I've gone out a few times and forgot it, and then it's a pain trying to adjust it. Um, EDC LED flashlight, a pocket knife, a box of 22 LR. That is dirt cheap. Now, here we were screaming and whining two years ago about how we can find 22 long rifle for lives dependent on it, and now you got it 500 round boxes for 30 bucks, 25 bucks. Um, Bass Pro or Cabela's gift cards, and finally, the best one of them all, CR3032 coin cell batteries. Buy them a 12 pack. Oh, paracord. Paracord is always good to give to because it's a pain to have to go buy it or paracord manufactured items. So that I got a bunch of keychains and, and uh, bracelets this year for stocking stuffers, actually. Dude, they're so handy. I keep one, even though I don't really wear them, I keep them in my vehicle because I never know if I'm going to snip it and tie something down. I've had to use that before to tie stuff down to the roof of my vehicle to bring it home. Um, you know, things like that. And that stuff is durable, man. It works so well. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Ghost, can you think of any other good ideas for friends that are that are gun people that, that you could pick up for them? You said gift cards are good. Any other just ideas, things we forgot about? Or, or what do you think, Ghost? If he's with us, he might have stepped away for a second there. All right. Do, 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 do. Let's see what oh. else we have here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Travis, check this yes. out. Yeah, my man. New ring, my new ringtone. Don't be infringed. 
<laughs> you should have that. That'll be your text messages or, or emails whenever any of us send you a message. The, the, that's, that's, that's my new text message sound because G-Webs did that on the uh, Daily Gun Show the other day, and I'm like, oh, I'm totally clipping that. <laughs> hey, I'm going to scan the chat real quick, guys, to see if anybody else had made, had made any other suggestions. The, another person said get a dedicated upper with a 22 or buy a 22 upper for your AR so you don't have to worry about swapping out bulk carrier groups. Just have one set for that and then have one for your 5.56 so that way you don't have to worry about cleaning it up so often because those 22s can get gummed up pretty quick because of all the powder residue. Uh, let's see. They're talking about music. Gift cards are always nice. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else here that's looking good. What's that? I, I just got an email and it said shall not be infringed. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Jumpy suggesting the 10 millimeter high point carbine. You can get those for under three hundred dollars. That'd be kind of fun to get somebody. Get them into a different caliber just for fun, right? Uh, what else do we have here? Do, do, do. Trying to see if there's anything else that's listed. I want to get that. I'd like. To, I'd love to get that that 10 millimeter carbine. That would just be awesome. No, oh, I'm not yet, salesman. Or? Guys, yes, they are. Yeah, they've been available for weeks now. Um, Buzz Guns already had them for sale. I want to ah. say they were they were 309, whereas you could get a standard nine or 45 for 253, if I'm not mistaken. It's got my I order from Davidson's uh, Gun Genie all the time, and they've got a listing for the 10 millimeter, but they have the retail price listed, but they tend to be about 100 bucks below the MSRP. So they're around 250. I mean, you want you want a good home defense gun with some takedown power. Man, I mean, you could get some wicked hot uh, 10 millimeter rounds that would do the job. Now, now if they would just make a 10 millimeter pistol, which maybe they're maybe that's going to be the next thing down the road, I would buy one of those in a heartbeat. My first handgun was a Glock G20, and I miss shooting a 10 millimeter. That'd be awesome. So if, um, I, if, if I got me a high point anything, I'd I I just have to get it Cerakoted with the hundred dollar bills, man. <laughs> oh, there you go. That yeah, there you go. Get your gangster no, lean no. on. No, you um, gotta get a modified one. That's the one million dollar bills. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> high point high points have a model available that already has the dollar bills on it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I don't that. think I could buy one unless it was like that. Well, you know, they do Cerakote them. They do Cerakote them in like five or six different finishes now, too. Yeah. Uh, no, they not have to, you know, exclusively shoot it with the, the gangster grip. It's it's not, not the sideways. Yeah. Yep. You got to get the, the um, what is it, the Trijicon M uh, RMR mount, but put it on the <laughs> side of the slide. Oh, there you just tap the side and drill it right in there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There you go. That would be awesome. Because we all know that that's the most efficient way to uh, take down a target is to shoot sideways. Um, hey, in the chat, here's a good one we haven't mentioned yet. The Dremel. The Dremel. I've Get a Dremel one. for somebody. Oh, yeah, I know. I've been using, I've gone through two or three of the Harbor Freight uh, imitation Dremels. And for what I've spent on those three, I probably could have just bought a Dremel by this point, And I could still use the bits. But yeah, everybody needs a Dremel. That was from uh, Gizzard Gary. That was definitely a good one. Tra Travis? Yo. I've got like a. Unlike you, I went and bought I went out and bought the Dremel right the first time instead of getting in the fake Dremel. Well, you know, some of us don't always think like that when we go out there. We want whatever's going to get by for the least amount of money possible. But they, they're okay. They just don't have a lot of power if you really need to do any grinding. So you're better off getting a real Dremel. And, and I've got like a 20 year old Dremel. It's held up. Quite well, actually. Your Dremel really loved those uh, Croatia mags, I tell you. Hey, uh, Jumpy is just, he's very happy in the chat right now because he's saying America, 10 millimeters more American than 45 ACP. Oh, uh, 10 no, millimeter no, can hit something no. pretty damn hard out of a 16 inch barrel. I don't think we're going to debate ballistical, <laughs> ballistic efficiency with a 10 millimeter coming out of a 16 inch barrel. That would be wicked. No. Um, I want a high point that's fur covered. I'm just looking at the chat right now. Got uh, <laughs> that cheetah print. Oh god! Oh, wow. Get some fabric and just coat it. I'll tell you what. Right now, guys, they make a they make a flat dark earth high point carbine that I I want it so bad. I think it's only a nine millimeter, maybe. But then they also make an OD green, and they just look cool. I mean, I love. I'm just a sucker for flat dark earth and black. That's just me. I just like the two tone color combination. But they make the carbine. I don't think they do a ten millimeter in flat dark earth. If they did, I would buy that immediately. Uh, oh, a workbench. Yoder's chiming in with a workbench. You know, um, Harbor Freight makes one that somebody could get you for Christmas. You just put it together. You're good to go. Um, Harbor Freight makes one. I think that's like $129, if I'm not mistaken, an all-wood workbench. You want something just to throw together that you can use. Uh, don't buy a rechargeable bucks. Dremel. What's that? That's $129, bucks, you are right. Is that yeah? Because I I'm always thinking about picking one up just for the basement down here. I've got a couple out in the garage already that are that were just already out there. Yeah, when we don't, don't buy the rechargeable Dremel. Always get the wired ones because those are the ones that always work. 
Okay, uh, jumpy, uh, jumpy killer, nice strike. Jumpy's trying to to one up you on this one. Forty five ACP was made by government entity, and ten, ten millimeter was made by the free market. So that means you know. Wasn't the ten millimeter developed for the FBI though? I mean, let's be honest here. Did yeah. we go yeah, back? And then they, get, they didn't use it. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't think I would bench. If we're doing the whole Wiener's Bigger thing, you, let's just throw it out there. 44 Magnum made by Elmer Keith. You can point the guy out. What about 4570? They make revolvers in that, right? Uh, do they make like a Thompson stole, Centerfire version of it or like a single shot? Stole black powder round, man. No oh, powder. okay. Okay, there you go. There you go. Isn't there a BFR in 4570? I think there is. Maybe. Yeah, is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Magnum Research makes the BFR in that. Here's another one, guys. Because so you the 454 got wasn't enough. Another good idea. If you want to spend some money, say, on a best friend or a family member that's an AR person, buy him a different upper. Buy him a 300 blackout upper or get him. I know uh, Radical Farms makes one in 458 SOCOM. Get him something different, you know, or maybe a 22 Nosler. You can get some good deals on those if you look around. Maybe get him a different caliber upper. That'd be cool to get something like that. But man, this is awesome. Now I can put whatever optic on it I want to. I can shoot a new caliber, um, you know, and you can sometimes get good deals on those. I'm still Two waiting optics. for the 762 by 54 AR upper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would, I, I wish more. I wish there were more uh, more AK pattern rifles chambered in that, other than just like the Vepper, because those are like 850 dollars. Uh, 762 by 54 R um, AK pattern I'm rifle. Get a PSL, I mean, but I can't find it yeah. around where I live. You're gonna drop some serious change on those. So ammo makes I the gift care. you can give any time of the year. This is true. Alan's right about that. Uh, ammo makes a great gift. You can. Just put a ribbon on it. Say, here you go. Have fun. That's I'm planning on spending my stuff. I'm probably looking to go in the ammo route uh, for any any holiday gift cards that I get or money. Um, Optics uh, is a good one to talk about. Ooh, uh, oh, we haven't even brushed on that yet. Yeah, yeah what's, what's primary up arms is coming out with some uh, pretty good budget options here lately. They just mm -hmm. they just dropped a new one uh, that I'm actually finding pretty interesting. What the one? The ACSS with the Kiss reticle or whatever. Or, uh, yeah. This is just a red dot. It's uh, uh, here. I'm gonna I'm gonna link it in the chat. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring it up for you. Yeah, Primary uh, Arms has got some really cool, especially if you know somebody that wants like a like for my my Ruger Ranch. I want to put like a like a like a three by nine by twenty four, like something a little more compact, good for about three hundred yards on it. They make a lot of neat scopes like that, and they make them for the seven sixty two by thirty nine and the five five six. They've got reticles designed just for those calibers, and so you've got a lot of options. Okay, I, this I got is, the uh, Hollow Sun ACSS one that uh, from an AK that's <clears throat> actually pretty nice. Now, Jim, how far are you from Primary Arms? They're down in, uh, is it Pearl? Pearl, Texas? Is that what it is? Is that... I know they're... I, have, I, 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 I remember they're in Texas. I don't remember exactly where, though. I want to say it's... I want to say it's... Oh, per Pearland or Pearland, Texas? I know I've been corrected Pearland? on this before, but... Man, I'll order stuff. Um, I literally... Yeah, I get I get their stuff literally in like two days. Oh, here we go. So what are we looking at? Can you guys see that? That's that's brand new. It looks it looks pretty fascinating though. It Removable looks like base. A TRS. It looks like a TRS twenty five, but it's it. it I've These got a little TRS more solid though. I mean, not 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 to bag on a TRS twenty five. No, no, I hear uh, you know a TRS. It's only a fifty. You know, and the TRS twenty fives are not perfect. I've got one. I just bought one a couple weeks ago. Um, but this is supposed to have a two MOA dot, so it's a uh, you know. Is that it is different than the TRS 25. The TRS 25 has got a ridge cut in the top and the bottom that your lens cover cables, your bungees kind of go into. But now, what's the MOA on this? What are we looking at? The 50, two MOA dot, hour. I think. Two MOA dot, so 149. You know, if you're on the, I'm just gonna say this right now. Just, just get quality optics. You're gonna waste more money on junk optics than you're gonna do on it. Get yourself a good dot side. Get yourself a good scope the first time. I mean. It, people, it's amazing. People put all this money into their firearms and their ammo, and they just don't ever get themselves good optics to put on there. They want to go buy the cheapest scope they can put on there that's going to get the job done, which is fine. But you know, you want something maybe a little bit better. Well, and you can get, get some reasonably good optics without breaking the bank like this. Yep. I mean, I don't think this is here's, horrible. Here's mounts, and they've got risers, twenty four ninety nine. You can get yourself a one third co witness micro dot riser, uh, and then you can get yourself an absolute co witness micro dot riser. So they've got a lot of. Cool options that they offer. So you're looking at around two hundred dollars, you know, one seventy-five. That's not a bad idea. Go ahead and stop the screen share on that there. Yeah, that you know, that's cool, man. Optics are a good one. I know that uh, Cabela's hasn't. I know you might say they're junk, but Cabela's has an EOTech that's marked down a hundred dollars. 
Um, I don't know if there's been any good deals on aim points at all or hollow sun. We'll keep an eye out for that. Um, I know PSA right now is offering a vortex spark or spark two with 10 P mags for one ninety nine. You're basically getting 10 P mags for free. If you order it, and I believe it has free shipping. Um, well, you know, PSA stuff can change every hour when you're looking it up online because of what they sell out of and what they, what they offer. So yeah, yeah, man, a lot of, a lot of good options out there for stuff. Um, I got, I got yeah. an idea that just kind of popped in my brain. If you have somebody that is either a machinist or loves working with tools in their hands, get them a yep. parts kit for like an AK or a set me. Ooh, there you go. Like a, like a parts kit to build a lower. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. There you go. Uh, if they've got a drill press, maybe get them an 80% lower. If you know somebody that's a Glock person, get them one of those 80% Glocks. Just something to play around with. It's something to do over the winter months. You know, that's a really cool idea, and you don't have to break the bank on that. What's an 80% lower cost? Well, you can buy a regular lower for, what, $39? Like an Anderson for $49? Is that right? We've seen them yeah, that low, like a strip yeah, lower. I've seen Anderson about a month ago for like $49.99. Yeah, get some good, uh, some, good, some good deals out here. Uh, let's see... Trying to see what people are saying. Oh man, Midnight Range is posting some interesting stuff in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that people have mentioned before we go ahead and wrap up here. But again, lots of good ideas. So again, hopefully, if you guys go back and listen to this chat and just jot some stuff down, uh, you know, maybe you need some new. I've got one more for you, Travis. Go ahead, man. Yeah. Um, and I just got this for myself here. It just came on Thursday, so I can't really do much of a review yet. But you know, talking about EDC stuff. Yep. Now. I would say holsters, but that's kind of personal because what's comfortable for me and my tactical muffin top isn't necessarily going to work for the next guy. Dude, I know but exactly I how just you feel. Got, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just got the uh, the belt from Alien Gear. It's 14 ounce leather with a steel reinforced core, and I mean this thing is amazing. It's nice and thick and heavy. It looks nice, so you know unless you're wearing a three piece suit, I mean this will. This will work with just, you know, casual dress or, or whatever. Um, it's a nice looking belt, good and heavy, no sag to it. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of research on these and, and I, I looked at some reviews here and there on YouTube and there's guys that have had these things for a year or two and it looks just as good as the day they put it on. So, um, you know, a good heavy um, gun belt for somebody that, you know, carries every day. Um, that'll really go a long way to helping them carry that thing every day because if, if your if your belt and your holster don't work very well then you're more tempted to just leave the thing home and then why the heck even have it but just a good gun belt uh, whether it's you know alien gear or bigfoot or uh track line or you know any of those good belt manufacturers um you know give somebody if you're not sure what size give them a gift certificate there you know, if, you've, if you've got a significant other that concealed carries and they're always complaining about their belt or their gun is always sagging, okay, I'm kind of talking to the ladies or guys or whatever, um, just go in their closet and see what size of pants they wear and get them a nice concealed carry belt. That would be an awesome gift to open up. You've got a nice mm -hmm. alien gear belt. Um, it, and if you're looking at this stuff, if you don't know much about concealed carry gear, there's a ton of videos online, but the alien gear, I think, would be a solid choice. So if you want to get something for that gun person in your life and you know their pant size, all right, uh, or you can somehow discreetly get their pant size, you could then order them a gun belt. Yeah, that makes a world of difference. I was a little bit ashamed. It took me two years as a concealed carrier before I bought a proper gun belt. And it is unbelievable how much weight bearing it takes off you when you have that and how much more comfortable and how much more often you want to conceal carry because you've got a proper belt. And you're looking at well, exactly. what, how much How much are we talking, 50, 70, 40? What was it? They they run about sixty bucks if you okay. get them full price. I bought mine with a holster, so I, I got a fifteen dollar price break on my belt. Okay. So I got it for okay. forty five. Then I now, spent an extra two bucks on the black hardware instead of the nickel plated hardware. But yeah. uh, so I've got black belt, black black buckle. But sure. Sure. I mean, this thing is, it's really nice. And and you know, even with my my cheap, you know, I've got like a twenty dollar nylon, uh, just a just a you know got the D-ring buckle and whatever, and, it, and yeah. it's Velcro, it folds back itself from Cabela's. And I've been wearing that for the most part for my for my everyday carry for a long time, and that works really, really well, but, I mean, there's no comparison. And I already, you know, I've got the Alien Gear holster. I, I'm, I guess, kind of a fanboy now because I've got a couple other holsters, but uh, I already can forget that that thing's there most of the time during my day. And so I'm really looking forward to getting this belt, um, you know, add it into the system and, and really see what kind of a difference it makes for me. 
now people in the chat are saying that the alien gear belts are made by Bigfoot gun belts. And so maybe the, if, the big fill, if it's cheaper to go the Bigfoot route, go check out Big Bigfoot gun belts online. Um, yeah, look at both websites and just see if either one of them has it on sale. Okay. But like I said, if, if you're going to buy a holster from alien gear, then usually you can get 15 bucks off your belt. So yeah. um, they run a lot of good combo specials where you get two holsters, you get a price break, or yep. you get a holster and a belt, you get a price break. So, uh, um, I know they're not for everybody and a lot of people, you know, look down on them, but I, I tell you what, for the price point, I don't have anything better. I mean, I've got a couple from Nate squared that I don't know that they're any more comfortable. In fact, I think I'm going to sell them off just because I've got all the holsters I need now. Yeah. Has, exactly. has anyone mentioned like a nightstand safe or something? No. No, no, you know somebody's got kids and, and they, they're on the verge of getting a gun or not and they don't know what to do. Uh, Hornady makes a nice biometric. They just yeah. scan your finger across it. Now, I'm obviously, I am always for having your guns at the ready at all times for home defense. But if you got kids, that's right. I know, Tony, you're going to chime in and say, my you know, grandkids know not to touch it. Well, other if you got a, if you got a kid that has friends that come over or there's going to be a sleepover or something and you just want a little bit of peace of mind, there's nothing wrong with having a good electric safe. A lot of them, you punch a code in in two seconds, and boom, the they have a bracelet. pops out. What's that? Some of them have another bracelet. You just swipe the bracelet over yeah. the top, and it opens up. Yeah, I think the Hornaday well, one, they have like a key fob and a, and a wrist brace and also just a biometric scanner you whiz your finger over for 100 yeah. bucks. Boop, yeah. lids pops up. I've, there's I've actually, I've actually been hinting, uh, not very subtly hinting to, to Mrs. <laughs> B about that exact safe i i would love to have just the the small one that fits in the vehicle or fits on the nightstand and yeah. and yeah you can it comes with bracelets it comes with a key ring it comes with a sticker that you can put on your phone yeah uh, so you know plus you can use the keypad or whatever i would love to have one of those so so mrs d uh i left her home and she's asleep right now i think still she didn't want to get up this early and go hunting with me but when you listen to this later on uh hint hint hornady rapid safe Okay, so go to the 90-minute mark on this video, pause it, put it up on her computer as a tab, so she'll be clicking, and she's like, what's this? And she hits play, Mrs. D, I want this for Christmas. You just let the whole world know that she can now not let you down. You know, peer pressure and guilt are very powerful things. When it <laughs> uh, But yeah, no. Man, I, I'm hoping somebody will maybe ask me about, about this on a future Caliber Corner chat, maybe, you know, after Christmas, just to see if she came through for me or not. Yeah, we'll check up on you, man. Definitely, definitely. You know, that'd be kind of cool. Or, you or know, if you know somebody. Yeah, go ahead. Or, I was gonna say, or just to see if I get a black eye for putting her on the spot, you know, on YouTube. <laughs> like this. Let's hope not, man. Let's hope not. But that's, yeah, gun safe is a good idea. Again, I'm hoping today we've covered a little bit of everything to give you some ideas, uh, you know, whether it's just basic outdoors gear or, you know, stocking stuffers, hand warmers are kind of fun to put, you know, like those little hand warmers you crack and shake, yeah. uh, you know, little, little things you can put in the stockings, magazines, uh, cleaning supplies. I mean, I'm not going to say no to anything gun related that somebody gives me unless it's a, a sky CPX two. And then I would refuse, but, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of options out there. Uh, if you're looking for a good red dot to buy somebody for their AR vortex strike fire two, I've got one over here. I've had it for years and it's always been a very solid choice. Um, those are 179 bucks. Uh, the Spark, the Spark Twos are like 100, dollars 149. Uh, so you've got a lot of of really good options out there for stuff that you can get. Even just you know hunting related clothing or just some camo or you know if my grandma bought me camouflage socks, I would be happy. I'll take them. That's fine. You know, the idea is to kind of stick especially with that theme. Yeah. What's that wool? Yeah, especially I, I tell you what, I've kind of gone full circle because you know when you're a kid, yeah. you're you're opening up. Christmas presents, you're like, oh, crap, Grandma gave me socks again. But, oh, yeah. man, I have priced Merino wool socks, and I don't own a pair because of just the price right there. So, yeah, I mean, if, especially if you have somebody that's into hunting and, and hunting in areas where it gets cold, you know, wool socks, wool is awesome. It's a great insulator, even if it gets wet and doesn't lose that. Um, also, another thing, and I know this is maybe is just because I grew up in cow country here, but yeah. anybody who has a, a silk handkerchief or a silk neck scarf, the, you know, like the cowboys tie around yeah, their yeah. around their neck, those things are hella warm. And again, even if it gets wet, if you're breathing through it or whatever, and, and it gets kind of iced over, uh, that'll keep your face and your neck warm, you know, just as well as, as big bulky fleece or anything else will. So those are a couple other ideas real quick. You know, if you want to spend a little bit more, a couple ideas, if you know somebody that happens to get out a lot into the outdoors or somebody does a lot of camping or hiking and so on, a good uh, Carhartt jacket or a burn jacket, one of the insulated jackets would be nice. 
Um, the company Burn is B-E-A-R-N-E. They sell through Orslands. They're kind of a competitor for Carhartt. They make, I don't know if Carhartt does this yet. They make, Burn makes concealed carry specific jackets. They make heavy chore coats and they make uh, insulated jackets that have pockets inside designed for carrying your pistol. So if you're going to be working, but you want to keep your gun secure, but not mess with the his, uh, pistol or your belt and your holster, um, you can keep the pistol in one of those one of those design pockets, and it's designed specifically for holding your gun. And so they do make a concealed carry line of clothing, which I think is really cool. Um, so if you know somebody needs a new jacket or a new coat, maybe you got a husband or wife that's got a coat that's all beat up and worn out. You know, you've got a lot of options to go that route too. So you know, outdoor gear, work gear is always a good idea. Um, you know, hey, Walmart last year they had um, mossy oak hoodies for like five dollars or eight dollars on black friday i bought a couple of those and those are kind of nice kind of nice to have just for some extra camo to you layer with so. hoodies either oh god no no these things are nice i mean they're like eight bucks and they're they're the mossy oak brand or whatever mm. i mean they're they hold up well they've washed up well and it's a good pattern that goes with my other camo so you know you got that option too i'm a hoodie snob i i prefer my under armor oh just yeah no you can go that there's route not much, yeah. you know, I've, I've got one on right now and when i if I get out and moving with my with my hunting coat over top of my hoodie like this, I mean, the the Under Armour or some of those, just the breathability wise, um, if you do spend a few extra dollars on a hoodie for somebody, uh, you know, it'll keep them warmer in the long run just because it breathes so well. But uh, yeah, I love some some of my good old hoodies right out of Walmart too for fifteen bucks. Those are good ones. You know, thermal gear, Under Armour. I mean, if you spend the money and get, I'm not, I'm not a brand whore. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm, I believe in using whatever works for you. But Under Armour stuff or Columbia or some of those other companies that make thermal gear for winter weather. I mean, that it's hard to dispute the physics behind what they put into that stuff. It does work. It is worth the money. It'd be, I would rather spend fifty bucks and get a good insulated top or some insulated like thermals, right? That are going to do the job instead of having to layer and layer and layer and still be cold. So, well, and, and the biggest thing is the the more you spend on it, the, it seems like the thinner and the lighter it is, and, and yet still insulates. Arctic Shield is another good brand for that. And you it know, doesn't a lot have of these, a lot of go ahead. bulky insulation, but there's a liner that'll just reflect the heat back in. So, yep. you know, once you get warmed up and put that on, then it'll trap that heat in there, and that really works too. Oh yeah, yeah there's, definitely. There's like definitely. kind of a there's another brand that's kind of it's, it's, it's a lot of really cool stuff, but it's that lower level uh, price line, but the quality is as good as called Spider. Oh yeah, Y D E R S like that or they, Spiders. They make, they, they make pretty good stuff. They make they, a lot I of stuff online. Don't they? Yeah, they, they they started out as ski and snowboarding stuff. Yeah, but, um, I've seen lately here even at my local Bass Pro and, and then Dick's last uh, Dick's uh, Sporting Goods. They'll, they'll start carrying it. They've got the thermal stuff. So they, they've kind of gone from just uh, snowboarding jackets and all that to um, thermal stuff. Because I think a lot of people here in Arkansas will use them for hunting season. Oh, yeah. And it's a very, very good, viable uh, alternate to uh, some of the high-end Columbia and, and North Face mm -hmm. stuff, you know. Oh, man, you can drop so much money. Patagonia, it's unbelievable oh, yeah. what they get for this stuff. I can't oh, even yeah. afford to buy that. Not, I dream of having a Patagonia pullover, yeah. right? I yeah. think it's kind of some snobbery, too, because a lot of that stuff is sold at the malls and sold in your higher-end sporting goods stores. Um, you know, it's a good investment, too. If you want to get something that you know you're spending your money on that's going to be something that person's going to use a lot, get them some good thermal gear, yeah. a nice a nice hunting coat, um, or just like you said, the gift cards are a great idea. They can pick up stuff that they want to pick up. Uh, well, man, I think that's great. That's awesome. Speaking of being a brand whore, I'm a sucker yeah. for just about anything with the Browning Buckmark logo on it. So, I mean, I've got one yeah. on the back of my car, on the back window. I've got one hanging off my rearview mirror, you know. Um, one yeah. day I'm going to have a Browning rifle, you know, to go with yeah. all my Buckmark stuff. But, there you go. <laughs> they make, they make yeah, good. Yeah, uh, if you're listening. <laughs> There you go. They make good shooting vests. My wife has a, a shooting vest, a Browning shooting vest that has a shock pad that goes into it that was designed just for that vest. A gel uh, has a gel pouch that that I've seen those before. Does it, she, like she, it? she oh god, yes. Yeah. She she can yeah. handle. She's got a twenty gauge Stoker Condor over under that she'll use when we're shooting skeet or or uh, blue rock clay pigeons, and uh, it it works it works well for her because I know after so many rounds her shoulder starts to get kind of worn out because she's not a she's sure. not a she's not she's not a shooter in terms of going out. With the frequency that I do, speaking of um, uh, Browning, there you go, there's, there's one right there. Are you <laughs> in the blind right now? <laughs> no, he, you, hey, show us that yeah, view. Show us the, if you guys want to see what Nebraska looks oh, like what, on a deer hunting day, flip, here's, flip here's what the inside of my blind looks like. Can you see that? Hold on, let me flip the camera around here. It looks like he stole a ghost vehicle. <laughs> now he's in a. Here, he's here's, a dog here's where I'm sitting. Look at that. 
Now that is what I really here. You know what? There's no deer. I'm gonna just open the door here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys this because you know that picture that is my my avatar picture. Yep. I don't know how well I can do this, but can oh, I, that's a hill right there at uh, twelve o'clock. Can, can you see it? Yeah, right there at twelve yep. o'clock. That is that hill. That yep. uh, that's part of the family ranch. That top of that hill is right there. That's pretty cool. This is Nebraska landscape for pretty much the entire central portion, south to north, until you get up to the extreme north and the northeast. This is what you see. That's basically what we call prairie land. So you've got a lot of open area. You know, you're talking shots out to three, four hundred yards. And, and it is. And, and I tell you what, there are a lot of people that think Nebraska. You know, I hate driving through Nebraska. It's flat. There's nothing to see. But that's only if you stay along Interstate 80. You're in a river valley. Yeah, it's flat and it's boring, and I hate driving I 80. But if you come up here, I mean, we've got hills. You can't, nobody really can see where I am. But if, if I go about a mile and a half on path up that hill, I'll be in South Dakota. And I mean, there's there's just a lot of beautiful you, stuff right here. You run into hills, canyons, a lot of like, like, uh, evergreens pine trees and stuff like that it really oh, yeah. yeah and there is a reason why id goes across the middle of the state because it's flat that's why they did that so you wouldn't have to worry about geography getting in the way in hills and things like that you go north or south of interstate 80 that's the main interstate that runs through the state it's beautiful man you start to go south you get a lot more brush along the river you go north you start to run into the hills and stuff so yeah well and, and the thing is i mean where you live you know you're right on the on the edge of this too and i'm on, mm -hmm. on a different corner but in Nebraska, we have something that nowhere else in the world has got. They call it the sand hills. And these are sand dunes, but they're stabilized. They've got grass growing on them, and it's the largest area of stabilized sand dunes in the entire world right here in our backyard. And, and anybody the, that's uh, never been through, yeah. through the Nebraska sand hills, I mean, it's worth a trip. Trust me, you'll be glad you came and checked, you know, come out here and check it out. And it's worth a trip out to Nebraska. And, uh, Plus, I mean, there's cool people like Travis and myself out here, too. So, <laughs> Just talk you know, to Squib I, I about that. Squib, Squib was blown away by how friendly <laughs> everybody is out here. We're so desperate for, for friends out here. I know our state population is, what, like 1.5 million for the entire state? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, there's suburbs that have more people living in them than us. Well, and the thing is, 1.5 million, but half of that lives in Omaha and Lincoln. Oh, yeah, so, easy, easy. The majority of the population is in two cities and their suburbs. The, the place you know? where I'm sitting right now. Uh, I bet there's not a thousand people in this county and not just residents. I bet there's not a thousand people even with hunting season right now in this county yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah, or not much more than a thousand in the whole county. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a great place to be, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping there's talk by next year, uh, half the state might even have electricity and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's still years or so we'll probably be done using outhouses. So, you know, we're, we're going to catch right up with technology. We are going to get running water soon. Yeah, uh, actually, speaking of water, we happen to sit on the largest freshwater aquifer in the world. So all you got to do is drill a hundred feet, and you basically got an unlimited supply of fresh water. Yeah, there nice. have been places where I've dug post holes and hit water. There, there's a lot of a oh lot yeah. Of that in, around in the here. town where I live, I'm actually in the basement now. Where I live, it's it's considered a, it is basically a flood basin because we're within about two miles of the Platte River. You go down 15 feet, you hit water. So a lot of people in town don't even have basements because they couldn't because it's weird my town section off there's zones that were allowed to build basements and zones that weren't based on the profile of water underneath so you don't have to go far i mean it's it's amazing there's a lot a lot of people that i know they have literally wells in their backyard they have that spigot you lift up you know you just turn that little handle up and water comes out people have that in their backyards so they don't even have to go off of city water for water in their yards and things like that that's why, and that's a, here's another thing too. This is I want to get this out. This is a little a little soapbox topic. That's one of the reasons why we don't want the Keystone Pipeline to go across Nebraska, because if they have a spill, you could potentially pollute the biggest freshwater supply in the world, uh, underground water wow. supply in the world. That's why we're so. That's why we're big outdoors people. We're all for business. We're all for commerce. But the fact that you could drop a couple hundred thousand gallons of crude. And it soaks up in this soil. You're going to have some major issues, and it's yeah. I mean, this I know this has nothing to do with holiday gift ideas, but what you guys see, that's one of the reasons why we don't want it. Well, that's why I don't want it necessarily. But um, well, and see, I'm I'm torn. I'm on the fence here with this because I agree with you. Um, although I'm not sure how we're going to contaminate water when oil won't mix with it. And the other thing is, below or above that water is the world's largest natural water filter, which is our sandhills. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I think people worry about a big spill. 
that I, I'm not as concerned as a lot of people are, I don't think, and maybe it's because I'm not a geologist too, but through a big portion of this ranch is going to have pipeline buried under it. Yeah. And they've already come out twice and surveyed for easement. And uh, I don't know exactly what they've paid my dad uh, just for easement rights, just to come survey. And then I know there's been a payment come through for the, the permanent easement um, for them to come through here. But uh, I don't know what he's got for that, but I know the check was fat. I mean, they, they're paying people well, uh, yeah. for coming through here. So, I mean, there, there's, there's that side to it. Um, I don't think my dad's a sellout just for letting people come and survey. Uh, because again, I mean, it may or may not ever go through, but, well, uh, here's and the I'm thing, never going to see any yeah. of that fine. <laughs> They just had a spill recently was on the news. Uh, Keystone had a hundred thousand gallon spill. If, if they're able to contain that and clean that up and they can show no ecological damage or no contamination to the water supply, that's going to change my mind about the safety of it. Cause maybe like you said, it's not going to mix. It's not going to seep through the sand. It's going to sit on top of it. They just have to remove the soil and then replace it. So anyway, we can get off the topic, but yeah, no, I, I hear you. It's, it's an interesting, it's a dividing issue for us Nebraskans because you've got one portion painting ecological fear and then you got the other side that says it's good for business and a lot of people are going to profit from it so you know it's one of those things but um anyway yeah but it, i mean i can yeah. remember oh i was gonna say you you don't maybe remember this um from from where you were travis yeah. but here about uh 30 years ago um not too far east of where i'm sitting right now there was plans to put a, a low level radioactive waste dump oh, yeah. Over, yeah. up by butte nebraska and i mean yeah, talk I about that. divisive uh, a divisive topic. I mean, I mean, it got to the point where a few of the protest rallies that they had, they had SWAT teams showing up just to keep the rioters down, or they were worried about a riot. It never happened, but there were people that were very hot under the collar on, on that deal too. So we've had a lot of issues up here in Nebraska that I, don't, I think a lot of the rest of the world doesn't even know have, have happened. So, but you know, whatever the price of progress is to get us that running water in the next 10 years. Yeah, you know, it's 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 an interesting situation. So, um, but anyway, guys, uh, if you're just joining in, I apologize. We had kind of veered off the chat a little bit. It's two two Nebraskans de debating a hotly contested. The fact is, it's a beautiful <laughs> state. Come hunt here. Come spend your money here. Come see why gun shows come film here. All right. But anyway, uh, gift ideas. Any final gift ideas that you guys want to throw out there? We've been going for almost two hours now already. And again, I want to thank the panelists that have come in and gone. And we'll hit the attendance here in a little bit and see who's been with us today. But any other final gift ideas? Any other thoughts, guys? Okay. Uh, anything? Had... I, this is kind of personalized, but uh, yep. any thoughts on car carry gear? <laughs> I mean, most people, oh. a lot of people just throw it in their pocket in their door, but, you know. Yeah, th yeah, there's, yeah. There's things you can do there. They've got the different magnets you can buy. They've got different holsters for, for, the, uh, for the vehicle. Um, I was also thinking if you got – go ahead. Yeah, you need a safe. If you give that safe you from the nightstand, they can yep. take that and put in their vehicle during the day as well or something. Yeah, in some places you have to lock your firearm to, up depending on yeah. how you do it. If you don't have a lockable glove box, many times you're in trouble. John, what is that? Triple D, what is that? I was muted. Um, this is one of my Alien Gear holsters. Actually. Let me pop this out. That right there is just the mount. Can you guys see that very well? Yep. And then the it's just the holster. It's the, it's the paddle holster. Okay. And this is just, I mean, I don't have the, the handgun in it right now, of course, but this just fits right down in there and snaps in place. And then when, you know, if, if I, uh, if I'm carrying or something and, and I'm running errands, I have to, you know, run into the bank, anything like that, yeah. then I can just pop the thing up on my, my inside the waistband holster and just pop it right into there. And it's secure. Um, it's not concealed. So, if I've got it in there and my wife hops in the Tahoe and, yep. you know, goes somewhere, she's not breaking laws, uh, not having a concealed permit. It's, it's not, it's not hidden. So it, you know, it, we don't have a law against carrying it like that. And, and it's, yeah. like I said, it's secure. It's not just bouncing around. Trigger guards covered. I'm a huge, uh, stickler on whatever you're carrying and make sure your trigger guards covered. Um, even if you're going to put it, you know, if, if your coat has a specific pocket, you know, maybe put a mic holster on it before you put it in that pocket. Just make sure that nothing's ever going to, you know, bump up against you and catch that trigger. Because, I mean, we can never be too careful. And the last thing that, that any of our community wants is, is you know, another bullet in the gun of the, the anti-gunners. You know, they say, oh, yeah, it's not, it's not even safe. People are shooting people when they don't want to. So, so how'd you uh, mount that to the... Uh, the, the, the <laughs> so, 
so how'd you mount that to the center there? Is it, did you have to remove anything and run a nut and bolt through there or? Yeah, it's actually, there's four screws. Um, and, and when you get your, uh, when you get your mounting bracket, they call it, uh, what do they call it? The cloak dock from alien gear. And, uh, when you get that, it, it comes with a little paper template. You can actually just put that right up and I just punched holes right through the holes in the template and, and then just marked it with a pencil and then put my screws in there. It, it comes with, uh, drywall anchors. It comes with wood screws, metal screws, plastic screws. Uh, so it, it can be mounted in a variety of different surfaces. You can mount it under a desk or, you know, on a nightstand or beside the bed if you want to, or in a car. Or a lot of people have it mounted under the steering wheel instead of, um, yes, inside the leg like this. So. That's where I mounted mine. I just got an old retention holster that I wasn't using anymore. Put some holes, drilled some holes, put it in there with some nuts and bolts and all that, and I'm good to go. Yeah, no, this works really, really well. And since I don't have anything in my center console, um, and, and I mean, the best part is, you know, if I wanted to pop that out and take that shell off and, and switch it to a different handgun, I, you know, all I have to do is put the different shell on that holster and in a way I go, I generally don't even use this on my belt. This holster pretty much just stays in, in this mount all the time. And, and that way I've got my car mount. That, that's a great, that's a very flexible gift with a lot of different possibilities and a lot, I mean, your money is well spent on that kind of, that kind of a setup, you know? Absolutely. Cool, cool. And if you get the new offering from them, their new Shapeshift uh, starter kit comes with four different holster options. You've got your inside the waistband, regular, and then with the two clips, you've got a single clip appendix style. There's a belt slide, and then there's a paddle holster just like this, and it's all modular. Um, that does right now, that's coming with a bonus um, mount, too. It, it's not like this setup. It's a little bit different, but... Uh, Can you with the mounting kit so you can you can mount that little piece onto wherever you want to as well can you give us a bit of a price range on that what are we what are we looking at spending what's somebody looking at spending out of pocket <clears throat> uh, the one that i bought was for my uh, mmp shield and it's 99 bucks for their starter kit now you can just go and buy if you want just one specific holster out of that deal then you can buy those separately but they're about 40 50 bucks a piece anyway yeah, yeah so for 99 bucks for 33 more i bought a second shell for my for my glock 19 so i can run either either system um i did find out that uh, you need to buy a few extra pieces if you're going to use the the belt slide attachment um for for the second gun you're gonna have to get a few extra pieces but i mean you know still for 40 bucks you get that second option and then i've got all the all the options that i that i need right now for both both handguns either way and it's just, I don't know if anybody's seen the video, um, Matt over at Never Enough Ammo actually has, has made a couple videos that apparently Alien Gear sent him one for T&E, and uh, he makes it look super easy on how easy it is just to switch this from inside the waistband to belt slide to paddle or whatever. Um, it really is that simple. I mean, it's nice. Just don't lose your, your pieces. Leave them right in your box. I don't even take mine out of the box and put it in a bag or anything. It's, they're all, you know, labeled and organized and, and I just left it right in there. And it's actually sitting in the back seat right now. I've got it with me in case I want to reconfigure one of my holsters. There you go. There you go. So, I mean, that's, that's a really cool idea. If somebody wants to find some value in a gift for somebody, I think that's a, that's an awesome idea. Very cool. I like it. I mean, I put that, that inside the waistband holster on and, uh, I, I forget that it's there. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's super comfortable it's got ventilated backing neoprene backing on it so yeah um yeah you can't go wrong with, with like i said some, some other stuff so again if there are any significant others watching this and you're you don't know what to get your your spouse or your boyfriend girlfriend whatever if they've suggested any holsters at all that is always a good choice because a lot of people tend to do their research on a holster and they're going to want to get a good one that's going to work for them it's amazing how many hours of youtube videos i watched before i bought my first kydex holster uh that's definitely money well spent if you're looking at value you know 40 to 50 dollars uh depending on who you want to go through there's a lot of really good companies out there now especially that make kydex holsters and it, there are some decent generic stuff you can buy like on ebay but i don't know if you're going to get the the tried and true quality versus buying something that's made from uh, you know reputable company reputable company so um Okay, anybody want, anybody want to finish up with anything else before we go ahead and call it? I got a question for you. It's not yeah. if, oh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry about oh, that. No, I'm not saying to you. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I was watching Shooting oh, USA last, uh, last Wednesday. I don't know if you guys watched it or not. The outdoor channel here, at least in Arkansas, we only get one night a week that's not hunting stuff. 
and so it's like shooting USA, shooting gallery, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, shooting USA. Yeah, that's, their, had a, oh. that's their Wednesday night at the range. Yeah. So Wednesday night they had the Hornady Zombie three gun in Nebraska. Oh yeah, you heard about yeah. that? Um, it's a little pricey to get into. I want to say it's is it about two hundred dollars to enter? It's a huge competition with, I believe, a, a monetary reward when you pull it off. I know it sells out. Yeah. It sells it's out literally cool. within a couple a days. Shot, which I think it's pretty cool. Every every it's a three gun competition, but everything's a headshot because it's a zombie theme. So, but I never heard of it before. I was like, I need to ask Travis about that. Yeah, that is a big deal. Um, I it I don't know how which one they're up to. If it's like the sixth or seventh that they've hosted now, yeah. but you see posters for it in the summertime when they do it, and it's yeah. it's cool. I'd like to do it, but it's it's a lot of it's a lot of ammo, and it is yeah. a big investment. But just to do it one time, there's a lot of people that want to do it. And I think that there's a huge cash reward for it if you win it, and they give away firearms and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the zombie shoot is awesome. It's just part of it is you got to be on standby and you got to be uh, financially ready to commit to it because it sells out. Yeah. Really quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I oh, saw yeah, that yeah. episode ghost. And I just had it on in the background the other day when it was on. Yeah. Um, and it was the middle of the day. I had a day off last week, and I think it was a rerun. But uh, uh, yeah, I saw that one. I didn't know that they did that. And you know, where I live, I'm two hours away from Grand Island. I didn't even know they did that. So is that, that the zombie? It, it's fun. Zombies. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say it. It. it yeah, like you said, it's headshots, but they've. They've got like steel silhouettes of of like zombie skulls or whatever, and yeah. then in the center is a place to put uh, a clay pigeon. They've got some yeah. zombie green blue rock that they're putting in there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, if you don't break the rock, then you didn't kill the, the zombie in the brain. It's pretty cool. I was like, oh, that's pretty sweet. I'll put a link for you guys on the internal. I just put one over on the YouTube side if you want to check out and see what it's all about. Um, they've got it's called Zombies in the Heartland. Yeah, there you go. Which would be pretty easy for us because you can see for miles, so you know it wouldn't be really hard for us to defend ourselves. <laughs> I know it's kind of interesting. Uh, World War Z said that Interstate 80 became one of the main feeding grounds because there were accidents on the interstate and people were stuck and there's nowhere to go because it's all flat. So Nebraska is a good place and a bad place to be when the zombie apocalypse breaks out. It's a good place to be because everybody's got a gun and people are very well versed with shooting targets at a distance, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they've got some good sponsors on board for that Zombies in the Heartland shoot. Um, that's another thing. Maybe you know somebody that wants to do it, and they just have been on the. They don't know if they want to do it or not. Or don't have the money. Uh, you could always buy them that package deal too. That's always something to think about, also. Yeah. Um, Has anyone mentioned uh, like if you've got a buddy or someone that's got a gun who's talked about getting a CCW but yep. has never pulled the trigger to buy? And obviously, you can't take care of the state self, but you can give them a certificate for the actual CCW class and kind of say, Hey, now you don't have an excuse. It's paid for. Now go get your stuff done. Has anyone mentioned yeah, something like that? That is uh, what I'm maybe considering doing for my best friend and his wife. Cause they've talked about and talked yeah. about if I buy it, it would you kind and I of both have friends that have been doing yep. the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got your friends interested in shooting and they've kind of taken up firearms and now they're shooting and they're enjoying couple guys on, gen on gun channels. We helped out. Yeah, definitely. We're saying, and one of them was here, but he's now yes, absent. He so I don't know where he went. But that was a, that was a bad deal. You know that video got demonetized, and I didn't Are think I was going to get my super chat money for it. I did get my super chat money for it, but I was thinking, man, if I didn't night strike, I'd be like, dude, you go get that now. You yeah. owe me, bro. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, of course, you're going to demonetize it. It has to do with somebody defending themselves. Why would they right. not? Um, one thing about that zombies in the heartland competition, it's expensive. It's three days of shooting, ten stages, five side match stages. Food is included, gift bags included, three hundred twenty-five dollars for three days. Oh wow! The wow. twenty fifteen prize table was valued at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, full auto experience with ammo furnished. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it, it, it looked fun. It looked, yeah. you know, like I said, I, you're just going off of what a TV, um, you know, little story is, but it looked cool, and I had never heard of it, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool because. You have a three gun, but they're all headshots. So that makes it that you know that brings a whole new aspect to competition. Yeah, yeah, it's headshots are not as easy as they make it look on TV. Not, not when you're being fine <laughs> and you know the clock's running. You know they recommend 200 rounds of rifle, handgun, and shotgun ammo. Basically, they say 100 plus or minus, but they recommend 200 rounds each. Yeah, is what you can expect to burn through. So, and I don't know if Hornaday supplies that ammo or if that was just for the uh, I doubt the it. thing, but it I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. And they're showing pictures of it on the website. There's people of all different ages. There's guys and gals shooting. There's oh, there was like ten years pros. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that's at the Heartland Does it say Park. About, does it say anything, Travis, about just if you just want to go be a spectator and just take it in? 
is there a charge for that just to get in, or can anybody I, just I go? Don't, I don't think so. Let me here. Let me check and see real quick. I thought that anybody I mean, could just go watch it if you want to. Watching uh, that on Outdoor uh, Channel, there on USA. I mean, they had John Scout in there. He was competing yep. and and doing some work in front of the camera and stuff. And I don't know if there were other, you know, other big name shooters there. But I mean, if you know, if if the Shooting USA team is going to show up, I mean, who knows who else is going to be there as far as big name competition shooters. We might even get like a Jerry Mitchell or somebody like that show up. Oh yeah. Yeah. They've got a whole rules book you can look through and they might mention what to do if you're just a spectator. And I don't know if they would charge a, I can't imagine them charging for just come out there and watch you. think It, it, is, a shoot, it is a, it is a public shooting park, isn't it? I believe the heartland park is managed either by the state or the city that it's located in where they actually have it as a very nice shooting park. I don't, I don't shoot there because it's a 180 mile round trip for me, but I know it's a very nice, um, nice shooting park to go to. So, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, if anybody's interested, just send, shoot them an email and say, hey, can I come watch? I don't think they would say no. In fact, they probably have bleachers. I'm sure there's family members that come watch. That would be kind of cool to go cover. Maybe ask them if they can take a couple yeah. videos or something like that. That'd well, it's cool. summertime. I'd be out of school, so I could definitely go cover it with the camera and just say, hey, I'd like to just film and make a video on it. Do you guys mind? And I'll yeah, give I'm you sure guys credit to whoever wants credit for it can have it, you know? Yeah. So. Well, nice. I, yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't turn down the free publicity on YouTube. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Well, hey, I'm going to go ahead and call it. We've been going for about a solid two hours here, and I'm, I'm going to go make some breakfast here. It's a waffles <laughs> and bacon day. A little hungry. I got a long day of watching uh, The Punisher ahead of me. That's right. And I know I sound like a lazy bum, but I've not, had, I've not had a weekend at home where I haven't had something going on for probably five or six weeks where we're home before the holidays. So we've been kind of catching up on our TV series, catching up on our shows. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching The Punisher. We've got a couple other shows we're watching right now, too. But that's basically the plan for today. So if anybody's bored, come on over. You guys can watch The Punisher with me. Um, we're just getting through Mr. Robot Season 3 right now, which is pretty cool. I'll hop uh, a jet. No, I, I love Mr. Robot. Hey, man, we got an airport. We got an airport, <laughs> I, right? I, I can... You can land jets in our, in our airport, believe it or not. We have people, a lot of people that have. I've seen uh, G, whatever you want to call them, G5s taken off, you know, Lear jets and stuff like that. At our airport, so there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah, no fly, problem. Man. Flying over, Top man. G5. There you go. Take, get your G6. Get your Gulfstream out. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, guys, anything else to add before we go ahead and call it? Are we good? I think uh, <clears throat> just if there's any younger guys watching, um, yeah. if you do like to give cash as a present and you give cash to your wife or girlfriend, you're still going to have to buy her a present. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> yeah, just get some flowers. Get it. How about a nice dinner without Chocolate. any interruptions? How about a dinner where you keep your phone put away the whole time? Uh, looks good always. How about just a nice night at the movies? I mean, there's a lot of good gifts that you can give that to show that person that you care. You know, you don't necessarily have to be something like high dollar and expensive. You know, the the lady or guy in your life might appreciate just some quiet time. You know, go clean the get house a, for get him. A babysitter uh, for the kids. You know. Uh, we'll I think, watch guys, I think guys would like the cash a lot more than women do. Like, I, I would not be yeah. offended whatsoever if you give me cash or gift cards. Got no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. wife, yeah, she'd be offended. That's that's the problem. My wife, my wife feels bad when she wants to. She's like, I don't just want to give you cash. I'm like, gimme, no, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's why you stop this video at certain points and just have the tabs open. Let her hit play, and we'll mention what it is she can get you. <laughs> Whether you want a little pocket tool, or you want a nice PT 111 G2, or oh, Mossberg uh, 88, all right, or a Mosin, right? There's lots of that's right. uh, a nice picture of ducks. I, it's backwards in my camera, by the way. <laughs> you know, you know what you should, what you should do is uh, you should just write like your top five things down on a piece of paper, yep. like maybe like three or four of them, yep. and just accidentally drop them around the house and be like, hey, have you seen that list I was writing? I don't know where the hell that went. Do it during the year, too. My mom's always asked me, what do you want for Christmas? Like, I don't know. I mean, it's like I always I think of these cool ideas during the year. And then it's like, what did I tell? What, what did I say? What What was it again that I want? I can't remember now. So just say maybe jot the ideas down over the course or get a get a get a wish list going on Amazon or any other any other place that let you do a wish list. Uh, I don't know, PSA. You can mark stuff with favorites or whatnot. You can have a list going on that also. So that's also an option, too pretty funny the wife asked me what i wanted for christmas and i just kind of looked at her <laughs> <laughs> do we really have to have this discussion dear yeah <laughs> something that has gunpowder involved with it <laughs> there you go oh geisley trigger yeah that's always good 
uh oh geez rock humper i'm just gonna not say that one we're trying to keep this one g-rated today so yeah oh, goodness <laughs> uh, maybe he's just talking about like a concealed carry barrel i don't know but you guys can probably do the math on that so all right oh, guys goodness. i'm gonna go ahead and call it so first of all i want to thank all of you panelists that were here let's check out and see who joined us today we've got starting from the bottom to the top steadily samson rock humper the other other travis so tumanin is here jumpy uh who else was with patriot in the dark alan b pro car carrier hey a lot of people rich white's here jorge cortez was with us today uh a little bit of everybody joining us which is always good to have you guys ghost was there ghost was here right any of you guys that are in the panel also over on the gun channel side we also had clayton joining us which is very cool <laughs> clayton says this segment brought to you by the nebraska visitors bureau bro you spend a weekend here it will blow your freaking mind man you will absolutely love it I'll take you to the range, and then we'll take 15 minutes and go fill your deer tag, all right? Uh, Patrick was with us also. Thank you, Patrick. Ohio, 45 ACP. Tony, for joining us earlier. Thank you so much for joining us. From the panel, you guys want to plug anything before we go ahead and go? Uh, AWAG, we'll start with you. Anything you want to say before we call it? You can buy them a set me so that they can slap it instead of there slapping you. There we go. You. If I get a set me, you know I'm gonna be. You're gonna be the first person I contact if I decide to go that route. Okay. I I was thinking about getting a PTR 91 uh, when I before I bought my first AR. I really was looking at going that route, but they're just the thousand dollars kind of turned me off to it. But you know the set me's that was before we had the five hundred dollar uh, century guns. Um, Ghost, what do you want to say, man? Anything you want to plug before we call it? Um, yeah, Tactical Tuesday, every Tuesday night's live at uh, 8 Eastern. But I also I started releasing the Wanamaker and the J.M. Davis yeah. videos. Uh, yeah. My schedule is going to be Mondays and Thursdays around 6 o'clock, five, between 5.30 and 6. But my first J.M. Davis Museum video uh, drops today at, at 12 Central, so... Now, are you also are you also over on VidMe? Are you posting your yeah, stuff I'm, over I'm there too? Yeah, I'm on VidMe as well. Yeah. absolutely. Check out our channels. Usually, our VidMe channels are the exact same name as our YouTube channels and Gun Channel yep. names. Yep. So again, we always encourage you guys to go to Gun Channels and get your membership, participate in the podcast, participate in the live chat. Us guys doing VidMe, it's not that we're trying to steer clear of Gun Channels. We're using VidMe as a backup in case our YouTube channels ever get struck down or if we ever have anything pop up. And I want to mention something about VidMe uh, before I go. Jim Burgess, thanks for joining us, buddy. Anything you want to say before you call it a day? I uh, just, uh, you guys have a good weekend and keep 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 up with your state and local legislators oh, yeah. or, and national too. They're, 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 they're up to no good. Yeah, now that the now that the rallies are done and we're cooling off from that, let's not get uh, let's not get passive. Let's not get uh, inactive about that. Let's definitely keep an eye on what the legislature. Hey, look at your local if you have local gun chapters that lobby for you on the state level. Join them, give them support. Um, you know that's that's definitely something you need to do because that's the legislation is the big thing. Because once that passes, we don't get to do what we get to do anymore, and we don't want that to happen. So, right on, brother. Cool, cool. Uh, Midnight Range, you want to finish up with anything, buddy? Anything you want to plug? We've got that emergency turkey hotline coming up on huh, Sunday night yeah. at 10-ish 10, 10 Eastern time. Yeah, 10, 10, um, I've, I've sort of fallen into the 10.30 time slot. Um, cool. Gives us a little chance to get uh, get cleaned, uh, uh, cleaned up yeah. after The Walking Dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, um, definitely, yeah. Yeah, got to give some time for that. But, uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of new videos up this week. Uh, a couple of little one-minute fun little teasers. Uh, and then I've got a two-parter on turkey and gravy, or turkey and, and uh, sauce. And then yep. I've got a, a mashed potato video. So two, two or three of the big things that, uh, you know, you might need to, to brush up on for a good Thanksgiving meal. So, um, yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> tomorrow night, uh, I'm really trying to kind of focus on Thanksgiving um, for the question and answer of the – the closer and um it, i'm kind of considering it like a thanksgiving uh crisis call center hey i yep. i need some i need some advice on thanksgiving so if you want some help on you know how to do something or maybe some good flavors to use or something maybe uh that you've never done before that you want to try or, or some new flavor combinations or something you know stop into the show i'm, I'm hoping to you know hoping to have a a, a good crowd this week you do an awesome job with your cooking videos. So here's the deal, guys. If you're in charge of Thanksgiving dinner this year and you have no idea where to start, just go to Midnight Rage's channel. He will take care of basically what you need to know. And then um, I'll see if I can't get a pumpkin pie video up this week, too. And then also Sunday yeah, night. Over to, 
go over to Midnight Range TM's channel and uh, check out his uh, his his late night podcast. Bring your questions, bring your concerns, anything. The guy has got such a knowledge base on on the world of cooking and food. It's it's awesome. I know I've asked him just a few random kitchen questions I've had stuff about, and I've gotten a good response from him. So, uh, Travis, thank you so much for doing that. No, absolutely. It's, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, I'm getting a lot of fun comments under the videos. And, and that kind of thing's great because it, it trickles into the live chat. Yep. You know, um, right we, did an hour, we did an hour and a half just on talking about soup two weeks ago. Yep. Because a couple yep. of the guys wanted a good soup recipe for the fall, and I think we did three or four different soups. And yep. guys are trying them out at home and, and giving me some good feedback. It's been a blast, man. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. If you're not if you're not proficient in the kitchen, it's amazing how easy it is to learn. If you just pay a little bit of attention and follow instructions, it is amazing how easy it is to have good results in the kitchen. Uh, and you can learn a lot from watching uh, Midnight Range's channel, which is really cool. Yeah. And and the stuff that I'm doing, even some of the stuff that looks a little bit more modern or complicated or like goofy combinations of flavors it's all based on very simple techniques and that's what i that's kind of what i focus on so once you learn the techniques then you can take it all on your own you know what I mean? other other travis i have to agree with you as long as there's canned cranberry sauce i'm good now, now <laughs> midnight, midnight, midnight like range, you're, gonna, you're gonna kill me here midnight range but my we always have to have we bring with us a can of jelly cranberry sauce the, the <laughs> salsa that just comes out in one big clump and then we also oh, yeah. do we do stovetop for our stuffing uh we because my grandma makes some crazy stuff with breadcrumbs and raisins and celery which is delicious uh -huh. but we just we always have a box of stove top we sneak in there and make it in the morning with some chicken broth and uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be doing uh i already i got the okay from the wife i, I have to you know I've got, i gotta run stuff through the boss you know what i mean sure, we're, sure i'm gonna sure. be doing a uh, cranberry walnut and apple stuffing but there will be an a uh, a can of ocean spray cranberry jelly in the middle of the table too there's there nothing wrong with that at all i grew oh, up on easy that stuff, to make it is so easy to make fresh cranberry sauce, though, man. So freaking good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, but you it's can't not. Beat the real but stuff. it's not yeah. like. But it's not like jelly. Yeah, that that ocean spray. You can just take a <laughs> slice of it, just slam it. You can throw it on a dinner roll. You That's can just right. mix it in with other stuff. It's such a such a flexible side dish. Is it even a and side dish? Are we just eating jam? That's basically that's what much. we're doing, right? I mean, it's, that's, that's all it jelly. is. Just, yeah, it's pretty much jelly. But there's something yeah. you got to remember with food too is food is not always about it's not always necessarily the best thing it's sometimes it's what invokes memories of your childhood yep and my childhood always had that in the middle of the table so i will always have it in the middle of my table yeah still shaped like the can that's right yeah, with remember, the little guys, ridges yep <laughs> keep an eye on your diabetes <laughs> fun fact about wilford brimley style like, wilford brimley style that's right liberty home medical <laughs> yeah. Fun fact about those ocean spray cranberry juice. If you have a and the cranberry juice, listen to me. Sauces? Cranberry sauce. If you yeah. have a large enough straw, you can actually drink it like a drink. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bubble. <laughs> I speak from experience. <laughs> Dude, I have never thought go get one of those smoothie straws and just tap the can and just Oh my god, go. that would be unreal. Here's a here's a here's a Thanksgiving fun fact for you, food fact. Have you guys ever seen how they sort cranberries at the cranberry farm? Don't they, they like bounce them? They bounce they just them. Just drain the yep. log or something, or nope, what? They do. They drain them. They drain them. They put them up a conveyor, and then they fall off one of these little like steps. And if they bounce high enough, then they're good. And they there bounce into like a little hopper. It's pretty cool. Nice, nice. All right, cool, cool. Well, anyway, thanks for all the heads up and all the info. We'll be watching that Sunday night video. I might just chime in if we get. I know there's well, there's some casseroles we got to make, but I know how to make them. But uh, no, thanks for doing that, man. I appreciate it. Keep up the great work on your channel. Subscribe yeah, to Midnight Range TM if you want to. Thanks support, for having me. Support the other Travis. Support a hungry child. <laughs> uh, and Triple D, man. Anything you want to say before we call it? Uh, you know, not a whole lot. I just want to say, uh, you know, apologize to anybody if they got fed up with me going off track. Sorry for my ADD today. We didn't really stay on topic when I was talking. No, but, no, uh, no, thanks no, everybody no. For, yeah. for the invite. No, man, I appreciate you joining in. Thank you so much. I hope you have a good hunt, and I will let you know about January if I'm going to be coming out or not. Um, I'll talk to my dad this week, and then if it looks like it's a done deal, then I'll go ahead and buy my tag, and then I'll get in touch with you, and we'll figure out the logistics behind it. So. Uh, part Sounds of it good. would mean is I know I can go 10 minutes south and go film my deer tag, but I want to just hunt on some different scenery. I just want to go. I've gone to the same place for years now. It'd be nice to just go somewhere else. Uh, just maybe check out. I, just, I love big open areas. I love, I mean, it's just awesome. Yeah. I've always thought that, that hunting isn't about, you know, shooting your deer or, or shooting your duck or whatever you're going after there. Uh, yep. It's the experience. Yep. You know, in fact, when you're deer hunting, once you get your deer, it's over. 
Yeah. So um, then the we're just begins. going out. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, making friends, going out and hunting with somebody. I don't care if we get skunked. I mean, it's always a you know more fun to be with somebody. And uh, I'll take a bad day of hunting over a good day at work any day. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Even if you just That's the fact fun. you get to get out there, get some fresh air, just enjoy the scenery, just and enjoy the whole experience, and go with your family and friends. Right on, man. That is cool. Um, I was going to mention something about about Vidme real quick uh, before I call it, guys. Um, I'm I'm actually doing some since Vidme doesn't have live podcasting. I'm going to be putting a series of of videos up over there. I think I'm calling them Caliber Corner Q and A. So Vidme fans. And a lot of you guys are, are people that follow me on Vidme also. You can post questions in the chat for the video that I put up, and then I'll turn around and do a response video. And if I can somehow pull it off, I'd like to maybe do like a Hangouts that I can that I can record, and then I can post it, and we can all chime in on some answers on these things. I've already got people asking me questions, and a lot of them are people that don't follow me on YouTube. These are people that are getting into guns for the first time. So I'm doing some little Q&As over there. I'm not going to do them all the time, but... I'm, I'm getting some really good questions right now. Guys have honest questions about guns. And like, hey, what do you think about this firearm? What do you think about this? What do you think about this ammo or that ammo? So I'll just post a response video the first time, and then maybe we can work something out where we can do a Hangouts and, ans and answer VidMe questions. Because I'm posting those videos exclusively on VidMe, and then you can also get to them through gun channels. I put them on the main feed. So that's kind of one way to get in touch with your VidMe fans because – Vidme's been fantastic about accepting us and letting us bring our videos over and not restricting us and not giving us strikes and not demonetizing us. So I think that's really cool. And that's going to keep the gun community going and keep us out there because if we get cut off, it's going to be hard for us to share the knowledge that we do. Um, otherwise, guys, I think that's pretty much about it. So I want to thank you for joining us today, everybody that watched and joined in. Uh, hopefully we gave you some good ideas. We covered a little bit of everything. Maybe there's something that popped up that, that you didn't think about. Please go back and watch this and maybe skip through it a little bit. Fast forward, rewind, and you'll get some good ideas. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So, guys, this is Travis P11. This has been Caliber Corner number 20. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, does anybody want to give our usual goodbye? Something about bye, Felicia. Felicia. Bye, bye, Felicia. Bye, bye, Felicia. <laughs> I can do there we go. We all got to say hi. And on yeah. that note, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye, bye.